All right, we're live. We're live. We're live. There's what, what's the delay? Like twenty seconds, thirty? Our feed. Uh, I actually think it's on low latency right now, so it should be pretty. I wanted it on low latency for this, so yeah, it should be pretty. Very little delay. Oh, cool. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to A to Z live in studio. Ahmed Al Duri, master draftsman. The Ahmed Al Duri story featuring Stephen Zapata today. By surprise and dint of good luck, I have the indefatigable Ahmed Al Duri on my stream. I'm here to talk to him. He's here to answer your questions. We're here to chat with you, see what's up. Um, I don't know what else to say. We don't really have a plan here. We're I actually, I don't want to do this. All right, you just want to. All right, we're yeah. shutting it down. Yeah, I, uh, I thanks don't. everybody for being here. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. All right. Hey so, everyone, what's up? Um, if anyone has a, yeah, we don't have anything particular we're trying to talk about. So if anyone has any questions. Or uh, topics to just talk about. Or topics, yeah. yeah. If you don't know Ahmed, Med, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to anybody who may not know you? Even oh. though I take it most people here will already be very familiar with both your mind and your works and your body. Uh, well, yeah, I'm Ahmed al -Duri. Um Hmm. I'm trying to come up with a silly joke to be like, yeah, I'm this guy who doesn't do any. I, yeah. I got a YouTube channel, et cetera, artist, and I went to school with this guy. Yeah, we did go we to school. together for a while. Together. Yeah. That was fun. Fun times. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm here uh, just visiting my buddy Steven, and we're going to do a little thing, which we kind of planned to, but it's unplanned in terms of how we're going to do it. But I do have a question. Why is your text so tiny on that screen? Because that's like an actual 4K. It's not like MacBook 4K where it's like, it's 4K when you're using like an image app, but the text is. Well, you can make the text bigger. Like you can read that from here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can read that. <laughs> Guys, it's like yeah. so small. Uh, but luckily, you're. Well, you don't need to read that. You gotta read that. Right, right. Uh, okay, Stephen, right can you tell how you met Ahmed? Me? I, yeah. Uh, how did I meet you? Well, we we were in the same cohort at Art Center for yeah. Entertainment Design. We started 2009. 2009, yeah. 2009. Um, so we September. knew we, we must have known each other since at least orientation day. Oh, no, you came over to yeah. visit Lindsay. And I didn't meet you at orientation. I met you. You were sitting on your couch. And I remember I came in. I had my backpack. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a med. And you're like, Hi, I'm Steven. And I opened my backpack to show my prayer rug. I'm like, do you have a room I could use to pray? And you're like, oh, absolutely. Oh, and you told me. Right. That yeah, was it was a uh, long time ago. Yeah, I led you into my bedroom to pray. Yeah. I left you in there. The, yeah. Behind your door. Yeah. Wow, very. That, that's a nice first meeting. Yeah. You know, it was just like instead of being introduced to students, that was a very like human way. It was to it, meet you. It set up the rest of our existence mm -hmm. in terms of our connection. Yeah, yeah. And then we went through school together, and we we chatted. We were amicable, but we didn't become really close friends until I think like over halfway through. It would have been fifth term, so it would have been. Uh, right. Yeah, it was whenever we did our little exchange where I'm like. You should teach me how to perform. I'll tell you what I know about drawing. Wouldn't that have been was Kato's that, class? Was it? Or maybe it was fourth term. Who do we have fourth term? Ray Bustos. It was during that era. Yeah, because that, that, yeah, that's when we started to talk. It was because you had done an incredible performance for this project, and I'm like, there's something here that is glorious, and I must know what else there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And I proceeded to teach you nothing. You taught me a lot. Come on, dude. Whether you did it intentionally, just watching you just uh, kind of gave a template of how you could exist on, a, on stage. We did a lot. Yeah, we wrote a lot. We talked a lot. All sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And here we are. Here we yeah. are ever since. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else is up. Uh, Karem says, hey, wasn't this podcast supposed to be only one episode? This is the first but episode. There is. Yeah. What? It is one episode. You're looking at it. Uh, I have the not. one and only. <laughs> I, I have not been to Morocco yet, no. Hello, William. Uh, so you guys were secreted from the same orifice of the art machine. Surely this is the reason for your improbable levels of skill. Yeah, we were put through the same grinder. Yeah, I think it was less of like instruction and just doing it. Yeah, you know, doing like, it with a capital D. Doing <laughs> it with a capital D. I would describe it as being exfoliated with industrial strength art emollients. Okay, I just didn't know if that was a euphemism with a capital D. Like a sex thing? Yeah, yeah. Like as if someone put a large dick into some In, orifice. For the learning process of art, which didn't make sense to me. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Cool. But I'm I'm not surprised your brain went there because you just have a crass dude. I'm perverted. And coarse mind. I, I need to get. All right, so let's take on more questions. Okay. Steven is like drunk, Duncan Trussell of drawing. I could see that, but Duncan's seems more um, aloof. Aloof? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very in it. You know, yeah. I'm very attached. Is Steven a good cook? You have made. I don't recall. Much. I cook. I cook more now than when okay. um, than when we were living together. I started cooking much more once uh, I was living with my wife. All right. I wouldn't say I'm a. I wouldn't say I'm a good. Cook. You and your wife once made an incredible rhubarb pie. You remember oh, yeah? that one? Yeah, I don't quite yeah, remember, but there's been a lot of rhubarb pies. I'm a functional yeah. cook. He's, he's, he's good. He's he, yeah. yeah, he knows what he's doing. I have some staples. I can cook them well. You know, I rehearse them a lot. Is Ahmed still feasting mayo sandwiches? How, how do people even remember that? Uh, yeah, I like mayo. I don't. I don't overload it. Dude, you were a mayo evangelist I, I will, back yeah, in college. I remember. You were mad that I didn't put mayo on sandwiches. It was you, weird to you, me. You slowly wore me down. And then I was like, <laughs> all right, I'll try it. And you saw me putting mayo on with knives. And you were like, idiot. Dude, <laughs> you got to use a spoon. It's he more surface area. He scoops mayo out of the jar with a spoon. Same for peanut butter. Huge amounts would of mayo. Would you use a butter knife like that to eat yogurt? You or would you use a spoon? You spread things with knives. You could spread them with the, the other side of the spoon, too. It's just, it inclines you to use a lot. Yes. Like a lot. Yes. You're talking like a centimeter thick layer of mayonnaise. Only a centimeter? It's oh a bit, God, it's a this bit, guy's a, a it, newbie. It's a bit much. Hi, Fanny. Uh, are you a good cook, Ahmed? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty decent. Yeah, um, Ahmed's good. I've had a lot of his food. I, I, I try to do Iraqi dishes here and there. I lived off his banana bread. Ban those once, were good Once days. or twice, yeah. All right, I'm getting re I'm, the nerves are fading a little bit since it's been a while since I've done why, this. Why Feels you, good. Why are you nervous on my channel it's stream? Nothing to do, it's nothing to do with you. You streamed on your thing. You got two way two more, years ago? Dude, you got way more followers than no, me. No, no. All right, who's got questions? Why are you guys hanging out today? Gravity. I That's think so, it. yeah. Just raw gravity. Yeah. Pure gravitational. Hey, work. no, you guys said you wouldn't do this again. This is legal. Do what again? This is our first episode hey almond what's up drink water here uh what are, med in town no this is a this is just the virtual. typical obs setup is a hologram of med he's at his place in ohio it's pretty easy if you just get hologram plug-in for obs it just patches in anybody that you want you don't really need good software or, or good hardware either you don't need like extra webcams or anything did you catch that i just glitched yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. uh hello guys what do you think of the best advice now here's what i remember these streams to be about. So let me finish the sentence. Okay. Citizen of the world. Best advice for self-taught artists in order to develop a specific learning schedule and not get overwhelmed with all the resources that can be found online. Pick any path, make it simple, and just follow through. Find the simplest path as long as you're doing the thing with a goal. Uh, repetition and feeling at, as much as you can of what you're experiencing and try to retain things. And then be okay with the fact that you're not going to get a lot of things until you've done it many times for a long period of time and uh, have a structure. But that's just like the silly side of it. The real answer is have a structure in life, um, fitness, routines, social life. If you don't have a balance of all those things, your art will suffer. So don't make art absolutely everything. Just make it an important thing that gets a lot of attention, just not everything. You can... You say make your art a lot. Oh, you mean get a lot of attention from you. From yeah, you, individually. you don't want to just make your whole life about it. That would ruin it, I think. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I generally agree with that answer. I don't have much to add except for the tons of stuff that I have to add. I'm kidding. I don't, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sticking, sticking to whatever you're doing is the number one thing. It, everybody has different yeah. pedagogies, different formulations. Everyone's got different curriculums they want to put you through. But the only thing that actually makes a difference is actually going through it is actually doing it. Most people will never actually do it. They'll never sit yeah. there and do the drawings. That's it, the bit, the main thing. It's the same metaphor for everything. You could read so many books on how to get fit and imagine yourself doing it and doing it a couple times and then asking how to do it because it didn't work. Well, it's just, you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm with the best material stock print to print archival drafts blueprints on. That's going to be this guy answering that one. I have no idea. Archival drafts blueprints on? Yeah, we don't do um, we don't do that stuff. You could ask my wife. I don't I don't know. I, blueprint paper seems very specific. I think it must just be like an industry thing. You'd have to order it from some 
architectural vendor or something like that. That the the one time I've handled actual prints, they seemed it seemed a very particular kind of paper. Um, besides that, I don't know. Yeah, we don't really print stuff like that. We don't work in architecture. William has the same problem I do. I have a question. I have a trouble. I have trouble. I collect a lot of reference photos. How would you tell yourself, okay, I have enough. Stop. There's no end. <laughs> I, I would suppose. Okay, so you have resource collection mode. You're getting your reference, and each image has its potential. You could probably imagine how you might use it in your work. Um, but you stop by saying, I have to make a project right now, and I'm only going to use what I have for now, and see what you could do. Yeah, it, some people seem to think that reference gathering is like this collection of hundreds of folders on your computer that you have organized by like, well, these are robots, these are cars, this is the ocean. It's like, that's more just like a, a memory scrapbook, just like of, of stuff that you've been interested in. But real reference is in terms of a project. It's yes, in terms of exactly. a particular project. Func it's functional reference. And, it, and it's like, I need a picture of this fire hydrant because I'm going to make a scene with the thing in it. Yeah. I could have a million images of it, but that's useless unless I have a vector to point to with it. The, the more specifically you understand the requirements of the project you're working on, the, the more clear it will be when you, the more clear it will be when you have enough reference. The project will let you know. It's like, it's just one view of this thing or you, we need to understand it all the way around. It's just, it'll right. let you know. Your vision should be um, not in the, I guess, have a vision about what the goal is. It never ends up being what you want it to be. It either is better or worse, it doesn't matter. Um, but as long as you keep going towards that vision, you'll know exactly what reference you need to pull and not waste time with a bunch of other things. How do you feel about AI, Ahmed? Uh, let's see. <laughs> God damn it. I wasn't gonna talk about this, but... Um, no, I was, I'm going to say what I said I would say, which is uh, I think it's super interesting and I do plan to experiment with it when it's if and when it's ethically done. Ahmed and I have talked about this a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm very interested in it. I think it's incredible and I can't wait to use it for my projects, not images. I have other things in mind. I just uh, it's really messed up right now and it, I can't see it as a tool right now because of the theft aspect but i think it's absolutely incredible and i can't wait for the future it's gonna be amazing yeah Matt and i are both uh pretty you know sci-fi nerdy like love to think ahead to wild futures and things like that so doesn't everyone not everybody but um yeah we we're both super interested in how strange life and existence could get and this is just like another, yeah, another, another <laughs> gateway to that another so. chapter yeah, yeah. well Plus, uh, you want to make this a uh, podcast about aliens? We could do that. Oh, we could just talk yeah, about UFOs that'd for, be great. for hours. I'm all sure, following I, that I, stuff? I'm sure there's almost no way we could get 40 minutes in without it just <laughs> degrading into UFOs. All right, great. Uh, when are you going to invite Evan Amundsen for a talk? He's a great dude. You ever met that guy? I don't know him. Yeah, uh, I don't know him. You, you guys would get along quite well. Yeah, I've never, I've never spoken with him. Uh, if he wants to come on, yeah, I just don't. Uh, James knows him. Okay. I, I, I Oh, that, no, no, I was supposed to, James was going to do a talk with Evan and he was going to invite me to it, but then the, the talk uh, uh, fell apart. They just got busy. So, fair enough. Yeah, it could happen. Well, yeah. Uh, I think somebody wanted you to properly pronounce your name for I, everybody. I, they were asking if you pronounce it properly. I, I don't think I do. You're close. I, I, it's pretty close. I usually say Ahmed. That's close. Yeah, yeah that's what I say. Uh, if you guys can't sing a little tune to start the podcast off, you will disappoint me. I've gotten used to the pleasure of listening to Marshall Vandruff. It's an art stream. Nobody cares. Art is dead. Please stop drawing. Everybody hates it. Everybody hates it. Everybody hates drawing. Intelligence. Was that? Was it too dark? I feel like it got a little, a little dark. Well, you can't just have your cake and eat it too. All right. Well, yeah. If you're gonna tell us what to do, it's gonna go dark. So, uh, hey, I mean, how ethical is it to use AI art as a base, 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 or for photo bashing for your art pieces, especially commissions? Like, going back to what I said, if it's ethically sourced and it's not stolen artwork from all of us, and it's, uh, you know, 
clean. I don't know. It's just you. You have a vision in mind, and if photo bashing gets you there, do it. If you if you generate something and say, "I did this by hand. I'm an I'm an artist now." That's just that's just obnoxious. It, you know, your pipeline for your projects is your pipeline. Uh, that's that's all I have to say about that. They know my position. Okay. I'm just like like I, photo bashing and stuff. Photo bashing, I got you know. There's there's already a clean system and pipeline for photo bashing. Th that's what I'm ethically, saying. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, pe people think photo bashing is uh, people who are online who have never like worked in studios and things like that. They think photo bashing is just this thing with no structure, just do whatever you want with everyone's photos. And it's no. like that's not what actually happens. You know, if you're doing it for any real reason, you have to clear the photos. You have to pay for the packs. If you work at a studio, lawyers look at the images that you photo bash and they make sure that they think everything is above board and that there's not going to be any legal repercussions and things like that. There are ethical and legal guardrails on things like photo bashing. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't even ever think about that. And I just think photo bashing is it's, is it's a tool. Yeah. And it's, it has its own practitioners and people who focus on it and know how to do it well and what the nuances are there. AI doesn't have any of that right. stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's all fraught, you know, I don't mess with it. And I just don't see a good reason to rush in. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's some use cases like, uh, Assuming it's ethically sourced, let's say you're a sculptor and you're not really interested in making images, but you don't have concepts, but you scribble something out and let's say this new model is ethically sourced and you ask it, hey, can you take my sketches and give me some ideas and turnarounds? Like that's, I think that's a great use of it. Um, it's, a, it's a learning tool in that case, but I don't know. It, it, we're, it's just so up in the air right now. And, and people, I think for the most part, because of the, the, the negative stuff, uh, it's hard to see the positive, which is the potential. And I, I, my eyes are on the potential, and I'm like, okay, I'm just waiting for the dark stuff to stop so we can have fun with this. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's not fair the way that they did it, that they had to, they had to do it. They, they, oh, they just had to do it this way and bring it all down and turn it into a total bummer with the system that they came up with. Uh, yeah, it's a shame, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, as I've said before, like a generative art, procedural art, software art has been around for actually a long time. You told me that, yeah, yeah I was it, surprised. Yeah, it's not a completely new thing. It's just, you know, our world, people who look at fancy drawings and paintings, we don't know about that stuff because the different parts of art tend to be pretty siloed. But generative art, procedural art has been around in conceptual art, like fine art, contemporary art, weird art. Um, it has been in those worlds for a long time. And in that capacity, it's just th those people weren't using off the shelf products like Stable Diffusion or Mid Journey or anything like that. They were making their own data sets. They were programming their own software. Exactly. And all of that stuff just has a long history. It's clearly art. There's no ethical problems with it, you know, except for, you know, fringe cases that maybe do have an ethical problem. But it's because they involve something else. They did steal photos from someone or use people who weren't consenting in a data set. But um, yeah, there's actually already a long history of people making generative and procedural art. And if it's ethical, it's ethical. You know, it does exist. Uh, a contemporary artist working in that way is like an Anna Riddler who makes art that I think is really cool, really interesting and highly conceptual um, and makes all her own data sets and writes software and things like that. Yes. What if we cap AI at that and not talk about it anymore? Yeah, they get it. All right, it. let's do it. Cool. They get it. Uh, let's look for other kinds of questions. Yeah, there was something about your course. Ahmed, have you taken Steven's course? I've seen it, um, but no. I, I think a lot of it... Actually, there's probably a lot of stuff that you've talked about in there that I could see as new and helpful for me, um, but I haven't seen it. No, not yet. Yeah. And same same with me. I mean, I, I haven't taken Ahmed's course. I mean... You kind of did. If you've, if you've ever watched me... <laughs> During Art Center, it's just the same yeah. thing. Yeah, but I did wa I did look at a bunch of it. I, did, I just didn't do assignments or anything oh, yeah. like that. But okay. there was a while there after you put it out where I was uh, jumping around and playing chapters through and things like that, wanting to get the vibe on it. Right on. Uh, there is no defines man. How done is the course that you're making, Ahmed? If you if you were if you were to say in percentages, I can't wait until reason. Uh, the thing is, it keeps changing. At first, it was going to be an illustration course for, for like uh, fantasy, Magic the Gathering, that kind of stuff. Um, now it's evolved into like a shape design and composition course that's like pretty much just line and pencil uh, and not painting at all. But I, I'm going to try to find a way to merge the two. But 
uh, I don't have a percentage. The content, I'd say, is 80% there. Recording, I've only a little bit. So content, 80% there. Recording, 10, 20%. But because it keeps changing. But, you know, it'll it'll surface eventually. And it's, and it's going to be super fun. I, I can't wait. The Paperboy says, Ahmed, do you consider making some YouTube videos again? What's up, Paperboy? Been a while. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is he going to do it? Yeah, yeah. Is he going to do it? I suppose this what is... What would you even do? Didn't you already say everything that you're interested in saying? That's why I stopped. Society is begging you to no. shut up. I said everything that previous me had to say. New me has a lot. Has more things to say. New, different things You got to say them. Yeah. You got to say them. Yeah. Awesome. Looking forward to it, says Defines Man. That's good. Cheers, brother. I didn't like your composition video, Med. That's all right. I'll kill you. Don't you ever step to med like that. Thank you. Shut the fuck up. All right. All right. Uh, Ephraim says, any advice on having a 45 minute per day art practice on a really packed work schedule? Look, I'm petting the dog. Uh, oh, this is, this is interesting. I wonder if you and I would have different advice here. If you only had 45 minutes a day, yeah. I would... Um, was, where was it? Ephraim, here. Ephraim. Ephraim. I would say if you only had 45 minutes a day, I would not study. That's the advice that I would give. That's me personally. I, first off, you're not going to only have 45 minutes a day for your whole life. It will change. Something's going to shift, right? And um, if I think for the most part, for most people, being rawly creative, just drawing, is more sustainable than, than dumping those rare 45 minutes that you have, just dumping them into stuff that's kind of like makes you feel mediocre, or dulls the brain, or doesn't produce energy, and things like that. Now, everyone goes through a hot period where studying, where practicing raw skills does produce energy, but that ends for everybody. That's like a, a beginner gain zone or it can reemerge again in the intermediate period, but it's not forever for everyone. Um, and yeah, so for most people, I would say you only got four or five minutes, draw stuff that makes you happy and just enjoy it as much as possible and prioritize the enjoyment. As a sort of tangential to that, it's like if you were to pick up music, uh, like learning guitar, you could learn charts, you could learn chords you could learn uh, music theory and all that stuff especially if you only had 45 minutes every day but the same thing would apply i would say just pick one song that you really like or three or four and just play those over and over and there that mileage will eventually become so um so second nature that you can't help but add more difficulty to it so thoughts of remaining single for sake of <laughs> I'm leaving. Let's hear it. <laughs> I've been single for 17 years. Yeah, it's really good if you want to get good at art. That's for sure. I, I Something happened to me when I was 17, and I was like, all right, I'm done with relationships. Time to focus on career. Uh, I've always wanted to get Ahmed to open up about this stuff. And I don't think this is the place to do it, but just like it's it, anyone who has spent significant time in like occult circles, or if you've dived into mysticism, you know that it is an objective fact that if you retain your semen, oh, come on, it gives not you what... <laughs> incredible control of your chi internally. And you can divert that through chakras and energy channels into a, a power of your choosing. And whether you did it intentionally or unintentionally, I think it's clear to me that you diverted that into, well, you know, master draftsman Ahmed al -Duri. I mean, it's clear. Because people can't... This, the level, like, what comes out of here, right? It's not... It doesn't happen, even for people who practice a lot. And if you, if you put it all out on paper, there's one thing that's different. It's being single. You it's touched my hand. It's being yeah, no, I, 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 agree, I actually agree. I, I think if you've ever read anything on NoFap, that's not the point of any of this. But yeah, you're right regarding that. Uh, it, it's energy that could be diverted into something else. But uh, like fitness, drawing, 
relationships. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think um, if, you, if you're in a relationship and, and you're trying to learn this stuff, hopefully whoever you're with is supportive. Uh, for, for yeah, I'm left-handed. <laughs> so Yam says, "Does this hurt the dog?" <laughs> oh man, I'm right-handed. I'm, I'm kidding. Well, I'm left-handed and I'm ambidextrous. It's just weird stuff. That's weird stuff. I haven't showed you my one explanation. Ability to draw with my left hand. I believe you. You don't want to see it? No, no. I believe you. I just believe it. Uh, Pringle technique by TCK. Yes, it's it's legit. What? Oh, the Pringle technique. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you have an object, you show the front and the back of it by by twisting it. You have one more factor to show the illusion of depth, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Have you heard of the Pringle? Okay, nothing wrong with being single. Yeah, it's been great. In fact, I perfectly okay with it. But I'm starting to, you know, change that. River Shy says, Ahmed, have you seen the average Steven Zapata stream experience video? No. Uh, I, I doubt he has. No. I've seen it. Oh, wait. Is that someone else made it? Yeah. Ah. I, I, I've crossed a YouTube, a YouTube milestone. Someone else has taken it upon themselves to make a compilation channel of my streams to the tune of one video. I'm, okay. sure, I'm sure there will only be one. But, um, yeah. Can you protect Steven Zapata from gaslighting? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Eric Sue. They know that you like to. Oh, learn. Andres Aponte. Dude, this dude, super cool dude. Oh, yeah. Down in Colombia. Uh, I think I, uh, yeah, I had a good time there. Uh, when are you coming back to Colombia? Bring Steven too. Haha, <laughs> hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well too. I miss you guys. It was such a fun time. Que chimba, you know? Good times. I, I might be going down next year, not this year. Mm. But maybe next year. You should do a workshop at their atelier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dog needs head support? Calm down. Don't worry about her. Her? You don't... She's so spoiled. She's so spoiled. You, she doesn't need anything. If, the, if there was a head support there, she wouldn't even use it. Does your she, chat... She doesn't do anything unless that's exactly what she wants to be doing. Does she your, only does exactly what she wants. Does your chat know about her diet? Yeah, they know she's on a diet. I mm. think I mentioned it this week. It makes her fart. <laughs> she's been uh, good the past couple days, though. Would you ever post more, more artwork of your... Yeah, I do plan to get back in uh, on the on the field. I've just been spending a year on myself. So, all right. Lassie talks about art. Says, what do you guys think about art that mostly supplies aesthetics versus art that maybe has beautiful imagery but also has a great story? Maybe do you guys ever feel limited by only making images? Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is who loaded. the fuck says I only make images? Lassie, I don't know who you are, but watch yourself. All right? You don't know what's going on here. All right? There's a lot of assumptions built into that. Um, obviously, if it has a story that can only make it better, I would say so. I mean, if you leave that on the table, it, it's just something that could make the piece better, I think. And I'm, I'm including in there stories that are not explicit, right? I'm including in that stories that are hidden or more subtle. Dude. This guy reminded me. Remember, I just, okay, so I was at a coffee shop. I was sketching up against the wall because I don't like people watching when I'm sketching. I forgot there was glass behind me. So some dude came in and started talking to me. Uh, he was an artist. I think his name was Mark. Um, but yeah, we had a good time. 3D artist at a game studio. And I was just talking about um, YouTube and podcasts. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, you know, Steven Zapata? He's like, oh, he's the guy that made the video about the, I'm like, yeah, that's the guy. I, yeah. Uh, but I didn't say that I'm friends with you. Hmm. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. He seems kind of angry. Like, have you seen his TikToks? <laughs> I'm like, Did he think the TikToks yeah. were real? That's <laughs> awesome. I love yeah. it. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's like that. <laughs> no, no. I, I was like, no, he's, he's one of my best friends. My TikTok guy. got deleted. Oh, did? Yeah, they, uh, it, uh, I, I had already taken TikTok off my phone. Yeah. Someone in stream said, I think your account got banned. And I had had... What? I had, I had had a few videos... I haven't seen a single one yet. <laughs> I had had a few videos on there that, let's say, displayed some tasteful monster ass. And that had... Every time that happened, that made that... I used to get a strike, right? And TikTok is pretty... They're aggressive with it, but they're also lax. It's like, you can get a lot of strikes, but they're really, the algorithm's really aggressive. But with it's a drawing. I know, and it's not like eight 
eight tenths of Insta eight tenths of TikTok is just sixteen year old girls shaking their ass, but you draw a monster with some butt cheeks, they're like, someone's gonna jack off to this. <laughs> and we can't allow that. So I used to get strikes for that all the time. So when someone said that my TikTok got taken down, I figured they had found one more that had like slipped through the cracks and maybe it had I had gotten banned because I hit some level. So I went in to check. I knew that, I forgot about it. I went in to check and uh, it wasn't that. It was that they want me to confirm my age. And I was like, well, sure, I'll do that. But they want me to send them a picture of my driver's license yeah. and my face. And it's like, we all know that it's fraught right now. It's like, it's a Chinese company. We're in the US. Do you want to give state government IDs like that? I was just like, you know what? I'll pass on that one. I don't, I don't need the 30,000 followers. We can just let that disappear. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my first social media rodeo. Yeah. A fucking number like that, I'm willing to let it go. It doesn't matter. You, you've it got what matter. you need here yeah. as well. But what I what I did, I actually went because I was like, if I if it's going to be banned, I just want to get my videos in case I want to oh, repost them somewhere you else. You don't have them? They won't let me, no, they won't let you download them unless uh, unless you give the ID. So I'm like, they're gone. I don't have them saved on my computer, so they're just, oh, poof, man. they're gone. That's pretty cringe. Yeah. All right. Tell us the story of how Steven ended up improvising his project presentation last minute, nailing it. I like that story, but I don't know if I could tell it right now. I feel like that story applies to a lot of it's, yeah. presentations. I just don't have the waking energy to pull it off, but it was fun. I take it he means the... Um, the mirror one. The what? The mirror one for uh, environment space. That's oh. usually the story I tell when I talk about you. I see. I would have thought it was the tank. The, uh, That's the tank, a good one. The tank presentation. But that wasn't last minute the same way the mirror one was. Right. Well, the, the tank sucked, but the mirror, I guess, was really I built it that day. The tank one, actually, I have on camera on footage and which I'll share with you all someday. Um, that was so good. The teacher made you do it twice after he brought in the department chair. I didn't like that. Yeah, that was I don't weird. I'm not some monkey. Yeah. I don't I don't like dance monkey dance that that didn't please me. But he put me in a real situation and I was like, Fucking here we go. Time to be a consummate professional. And, and that, I just did it again. That version I recorded. Didn't um, like that. Do you prefer traditional or tra digital? I mean, depends on what I'm doing, but traditional for the most part. It's just more fun. Feels real. But if I'm practicing and doing studies, I, just digital is faster. I prefer, I can't finish stuff digital anymore. I, I can only finish traditional. I, I like digital for planning for playing with color, for anything that just benefits a lot from flexibility. I prefer digital because it's just so much easier to change things. But it's so amorphous and structureless and without context and there's no real scale that um, I can't finish. I, 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 can't, yeah. I can't finish yeah, stuff yeah. digitally. I can only finish traditionally. I feel that. Traditional naturally lets me know when it's going to be done. It just, I don't even need to, I don't need to ask, like, is it finished? Is it finished? Mm. It's just like, there's something about traditional that makes it obvious. There's a wall. It's like, you can't draw any smaller. Like you've hit the <laughs> wall, like everything's rendered now. If that's what you're going for, for that piece, digital doesn't have that. You can always zoom in. The more you zoom in and get lost, you blow the yeah. contrast hierarchy and the scale hierarchy. So then you have to, you wind up restarting that's, the yeah. painting 30 times because you've scaled everything different. It's, I hate it, I hate it. Your sense of, of the completion or the gestalt of it, the whole image of it gets distorted because of the zooming, the flipping, and you're like, what is the image to begin with? Yeah. Whereas yeah. traditional, it's just, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Switching back to oil painting. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good, good point. I mean, who, how, I'm guessing you're saying who, is the biggest influence on your art? Um, it, I mean, there's a chronology. First it was uh, probably J. Scott Campbell, Spider-Man, Green Goblin, then Craig Mullins, then Ian McKaig, then myself. I don't look up to artists' uh, artwork any, anymore as much. Like, you remember back in the day at Art Center, both of us were like fangirling about Ian McKay whenever we saw his stuff or something or saw him do his Noma DVDs because uh, his art was so good and, and it is it's very good but that feeling is, is go it's gone and left behind and there's just an empty space now where you just create yeah at a, at a certain point I mean we used to we used to analyze we spent so much time analyzing art yeah we used to just sit together open stuff up in Photoshop, draw lines on it, 
we would, you know, walk up to each other with a sketchbook and be like, I got it. Like, and just like draw, remember this part in this painting that this guy did. This yeah. is how it works. This is why it works. You guys need art friends. Yeah, it's super valuable. I mean, that, that that's some of the happiest times of my life. Uh, we did that for years and years and years, but eventually you do need to, you eventually you reach an area where just like, I just, it, it's less about hitting someone else's benchmark exactly. or doing things like someone else. And you just want to explore what you do. It's like a top down view, uh, like a map. Those artists that were so good kind of, you know, maybe even started in the same place, but they branched off mm. to their own thing. Then we followed those things. Now we're branching off from that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I do like Jamie Jones, but not, Jamie Jones was, um, like Craig Mullins was the guy at the time. You know the the godfather of it all, and Jamie Jones was like the the peripheral to that, and very inspirational, absolute master of composition. Um, but I w I didn't I wouldn't say that he's an influence too much on what I do. Craig is like Craig did everything. Craig did it, with a mouse. <laughs> it's like he did it all first, and we're all just like extrapolating on. It's like everyone picks like, all right, my whole career is based on this one Craig Mullins image, and they're just like exploring that. It's yeah, he did. He did at least one of everything, just like from totally abstract to perfectly real. He was doing like photo real history painting stuff, like the age Photoshop of Photoshop yeah. too. Like it's crazy. He just did everything and he did it all right away and early and we're all just kind of elaborating on stuff. It's really interesting. Yeah. So if you don't have that fangirling part of you anymore, do you still have that, oh wow, this is cool, might show an art friend saved. No. Uh, I, I collect art that I, that make me feel something, whether it's like, oh, I love the lighting on this or I like how the, the shapes are arranged on that. But uh, it's more just an, it's, there's just a buffet of infinity. And so some things could catch my attention, some things don't, but I don't find myself being like, oh my God, this is it yeah. anymore. And I would never, I would never share someone else's art with someone because that might make them forget how incredible my art is. I just want people to think about me and what I make. So I'm not gonna show someone else, someone else's art, that'd be weird. It'd be stupid. Why would you do that? What's up, Achilles? Long time no see. Uh, what have I been reading? Uh, not much these days, but a lot of sci-fi, actually. Nothing I've been, specific. I've been reading uh, How They Made the Atomic Bomb. Uh, interesting stuff. Uh, to get ready to, for Oppenheimer, for Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Wait, um, wait, what? Uh, Christopher Nolan's new movie coming out in July is about, about it? is about. It's called Oppenheimer. It's about Robert Oppenheimer. He was the guy who led the uh, Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. Or th the lead scientist on and it. That's why you're um, researching it. Um, yeah, so I wanted to read some of the. I was always interested in it, but then that was. Um, I like had always intended to read about the Manhattan Project, but then that pushed it over the edge, and I just finally started reading a book about it. Yo, is that why they call him Doctor Manhattan? Yes. Okay. Now it all makes sense. And that's why. Watchmen. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of texts. I can't keep up with everything. You gotta keep so, up. Uh, work, work, work. I don't do work. I don't work. Get the, get the. I don't dream of labor, friend. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know where to go. Do you guys think... Just pick anything. Do you guys think drawing will become more like the live music scene, similar to Kim Jong-gi watching it live, someone using their craft with an audience because of AR? No, I don't think that's... I mean, I mean, I think that could be a thing. But I also don't think AR is going to replace what's already here right now. Mm -hmm. you are, what's already here right now has its audience, and unless the audience disappears, I mean, I don't, I don't think it'll go away. I think it would be very hard for our niche of art to transition into something live because um, the a suitability to live performance is very few people's practices make sense for that. Mm. And if it would be a shame if that's what it became because it would condition people's practices very severely. It's like people who otherwise would be doing things that made them happier, that aligned with their base temperament, would keep being pulled into, I need to draw fast, I need to draw big, yeah. I need to draw with ink or other materials that are bold and contrasty so you can see it across the room and things like that. Um, I, I, I don't 
for me, that's not something to hope for or rely on for getting through the other side of the AI thing. I think I do think it would be a shame, actually. It would limit the kinds of practices out there. Um, it's just for some people, you know, doing... And it, it's not like music, because every musician, their practice is sort of... It makes sense that you could perform it live. But they're, like my stuff, pencil drawings that are not that big, you know, 14 by 17, like they're just too little right there the only three people can watch it at once and even even if you were right over my shoulder it's graphite it's very low contrast it's hard to see what the hell is actually happening moment to moment so it just it i don't think it's a good thing to force people's practices towards what works for live performance yeah i mean this this whole question revolves around i think money uh i think that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from it's like what am i going to do is it just going to switch to live uh, can I be a concept artist? Can I be an illustrator or anything anymore? Um, I, I just wish the aliens show up, restructure our society. We don't need money anymore, and everyone could just do whatever they want art-wise. <laughs> like, there's so many questions about what am I supposed to do? And the answer is always do what you want to do. But then it's like, is it marketable? Arr! I don't know. So I just got to keep going. I got to respond to Deirdre real quick. Um Ahmed, when you're not working, what is your favorite subject to draw? I've been really liking anatomy these days. Um, any sci-fi book recommendations? This motherfucker. Three-body problem. I, I'm out to, shut up. I'm out to How coffee with him. dare you? I go out to coffee with him, and he's like, have you ever, have you ever studied anatomy? I'm like, oh. why are you stepping to me like this? What is this That's not how it went game? down. I'm like, I was in your anatomy class, moron. That's literally not what I said. He, he's, he's looking at me, he's like, you ever draw a skeleton? You know, I'm like, you, what? Why are you being like this? He's like rediscovering anatomy. It's like it's the first time it's ever happened to anyone. It's odd. It's just odd behavior. Look, just because I discovered the how gas to draw lighting, a skeleton the gaslighting for you, the gaslighting. You need to calm down. So I, we we did this fun little challenge. I'm like, look, I'll draw a skeleton. You draw a skeleton, and then we switch. I'll draw the muscles on your skeleton, and vice versa. This guy, and I'm expecting a cool thing because I'm gonna draw these like cool muscular ogres with pecs and abs and and like rippling quadriceps uh and he and he gives me a back view he knew what he was doing he gave me a uh landmine that was unfair i had to look up reference for that you, you proud of yourself it was the, it was just, it's front or back it's the oh. ground floor decision i was mm. just like well that was so we can fuck him up right on step hurtful. one hurtful <laughs> fuck him up on step one I love how Ahmed draws the serratus as radiating, radiating lines. You know, if you look at the anatomy, it's all radiating from the scapula area. Yeah. So there's a vanishing point there. It's true, son. Is it worth to learn the name of the muscles? Yeah. Call them whatever you want. Football muscle. <laughs> it's the shape of a football. One of my teachers used to say that. You could remember the names, but if it works for you, like, what's your purpose? If you just want to draw anatomy, then you don't have to memorize the names. It helps, yeah. but you don't have to. It, 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 yeah, it, I would say the names are more a tool for the learning period because as the years go on, like I've forgotten some of the names, but you remember the shape and yeah. for the drawing part, that's what matters. The, but it is a useful tool while you're learning to learn the names because, well, if you can name something, you remember it has to go there, right? So you, it, it just gives you, it's easy when you're learning anatomy to just forget stuff. You leave out whole muscles and things like that. If you know the name, it's more likely that you'll remember to put it in. And also the names have hints. It, they're mostly Latin or Greek and things like that. But if you, um, if you learn what the etymology is of the names, they actually give you hints about the shape of the muscle, where it's coming from, where it's going. Can you show like me your extensor carpi radialis? That's right. It's a good name. But it's an extensor carpi on the radius radialis. See, it's one of my hints. favorite ones. Yeah. But again, yeah, it's either way. Um, if you're interested in like a, having a mental archive of how it's structured, yeah, knowing the etymology is good. But again, not required. Let me answer this one. Steven, if you could go back and do Art Center again, would you do illustration this time? No. I wouldn't. What would you do? Entertainment design, mm -hmm. again. It was more balanced. Mm -hmm. I, I think my natural temperament might have gone more with illustration just because they spend more time in life drawing and doing figures and things like that. But 
I, I just compensated for that on my own. I was like, fuck you. I'll do entertainment design and I'll just go to life drawing in the school oh, every yeah, day after class. That. I was like, I'll fix yeah. it myself. I'll compensate on my own. So I just did my whole entertainment design workload and went to life drawing like crazy. You were, he was the only one in our class that actually went to the free life drawing stuff. I think I went a couple times with you, but you were, you were pretty adamant. I was there a lot. Were we, have we, has it really been that long? Yeah, 53 minutes. Dang. Well, don't forget we had the timer going for about so, eight, eight-ish so minutes or something. 10, so it's been 40 minutes. That still feels pretty quick. Yeah, we're cruising, baby. Um, what's up, Alec? Uh, trying to get entry job as a mobile game artist, even if my portfolio doesn't exactly match my most employer's expectations. Any pointers? I can't, that kind of goes back to what I'm saying earlier. It's like, uh, do what you want to do and make that your portfolio, but at the same time, is it marketable? And if you're trying to be marketable in a mobile game environment, then you got to match what's working. Um, but if you want to be a, an artistic creative in that field, then uh, consider finding a more flexible studio or go indie and do your own thing. If, I don't know, man. Yeah. If you don't, if your portfolio doesn't match, it just becomes a numbers game. You need to send it to enough places until you get an art director who will sort of read into your skills and hire you because they can tell you can do it, um, even if the work you produce isn't right on the nose for it. But that's always going to be a minority. Most art directors don't have the time, the cognitive overhead to do that. They're going to hire for the thing that already looks exactly like what they need. That's what they're going to do. It's just the obvious way you would go if you were in that hiring position. But if you send it to a lot of people, eventually you'll get someone who will read into it a little bit. But if, if that's really your goal, I'd try to... That, it's probably worth your time to just angle it stylistically to be more on the nose for where you're applying. What breed is your dog, Stephen? Uh, she's Pomeranian and something. Who knows? She's got corgi ears, I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I always thought she was corgi. We did a DNA test once and no corgi came back, but, well, you know, like she's 60% mixed. These DNA tests are useless, so there's probably corgi in there somewhere. She, she's a rescue. She's from a hoarding house in Mississippi. She's from like a one bedroom apartment that had 16 dogs and cats in it, chickens, turtles, just like a, she's, who knows what she is, you know? Oh, Fanny. That so, dog is alive. She better be. I don't know what I'd do she, without her. She's out cold. Her she tongue's sticking out. been using a lot of blender in my artwork for work this year but i almost never draw or paint anymore you could come back to it you know you're still being creative it don't matter if you're using 3d as long as you're being creative and you feel like you're you know designing and making things what's it matter it's all right have you done a dna test 23 and me or anything no i i'm I, I don't i don't want to be too explicit about this but it's like Feels likely they'd uncover some murders and then I uh, wind yeah, up in I was prison. Bring that up, yeah. yeah, so I'm just yeah. gonna stay away from that for as long as possible until the U.S. government makes it compulsory. Okay, sure. I haven't done it. My my family has though. It's like I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I I I I know what's in my history. You just go back a couple generations. I'm on top of a pyramid, sacrificing somebody. That's it. That's I know the stone that. weapon. A hundred of absolutely. Yeah. Hundred percent. I'm I'm collecting their blood in a goblet. The sun is an eclipse is occurring. It's just I know that's in there. I know that's in there. <laughs> Everybody when they imagine past lives, it's always something grand. It's like you were, your great great grandparents were farmers and they died in pain. <laughs> died <laughs> in pain. That's it. Mine were nomads probably in that's in the deserts that. of Iraq. Uh... Has one of you ever dabbled in photography? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, actually, that's that's taken a big part of my last year. I never did much photography. Little, you know, shoot videos and stuff every now and then. I've done a lot of like being in in videos. I gotta say, uh, if you're interested in learning composition for your paintings or your drawings, put down the pencil, go outside, take as many photos as you can with intent. Like, see what happens when you line things up. See what happens when you're trying the thirds or fourths or fifth, like don't let anyone tell you what those things do. Go explore, see how they look. If you like them, it works. If, if it works for you, use in your paintings. But it's, it's a very quick way to see composition come to fruition right in front of you. And you, and you have 
limitless op opportunities of, of things to take pictures of. So if you want to get good at composition, you could draw, but taking pictures is also a really good way to do it. Guillerme Anjos says, any suggestions of things that one can do to improve clothing armors for 2D character concept art? I feel that I always design characters with blue jeans and white shirts, and that sucks. Haha. <laughs> First off, if you're, if you're clothing your character, your armor, if a ground floor requirement of it is that it's a woman with her tits out, even though she's wearing armor, don't, don't come to me asking, how do I make better armor? How, how, how do I do better research? I got it. If she's armored head to toe, but she's got the boob window yeah. and there's barely any cloth covering it, stop pretending. Stop pretending. Stop pretending you care. Stop pretending you're, you're a designer, you're paying attention to things. Just own that you're a thoughtless cretin and you just want to make cool shapes. And close Pinterest, send back the fucking armor reference book you got from Amazon and just do cool little squiggles until it looks nice. <laughs> if you're willing to just once cover up some breasts, then go to museums, go to armories, go look at real armor. It's fascinating stuff. And it's so uh, intricately crafted. I mean, it's master craftsmanship. Some of the greatest artists who have ever lived made armor. They're the best craftsmen who ever lived. And if it's very hard to grasp what's actually going on, if you're not if you're not seeing it in person, if you can, they have these at Ren fairs sometimes. Um, go to a recreation or reenactment that will let you hold the armor. Like they'll have like a, a gauntlet assembly, and you can just like pick it up and turn it around and actually look at it. Or if you know someone who has one, a pretty good reproduction, check it out, hold it, see how they actually fit together. It's very very interesting stuff. Um, for contemporary clothing, I think for most people, the best bang for your buck is to just. Um, get similar clothes and shoot reference if, you, if you're just trying to be as practical as possible. Absolutely. I'm going to give this person an assignment. What's their name? Guilherme? What kind of, is that Portuguese? I don't even I don't know. know. I'm pronouncing it Guilherme. Senor Anjos. Uh, you've played MMORPGs before or anything, I'm sure, where you, where you get to pick what your character wears, right? You get the armor, the gauntlet, whatever. Get yourself a blank sheet and write out, don't draw out, just write out what you're going to put in the slot for this thing and then research that thing and draw it 10 times, 10 different combinations of anything. It could be historically accurate. It could be a, an armor suit that's made of bananas. It doesn't matter. But that's the exercise where you have to go through the method of choosing and, and verbalizing this thing goes here. Otherwise blue t-shirt or white t-shirt and blue jeans. That's all you're going to do. If you don't do the research, set it up, have a little library for yourself and, uh, and, and you do these 10 images. Um, I'm messing up how I'm speaking here, but anyway, just do that. You'll get good at the process of going out in the world and thrifting things to put on your characters. Don't think it's supposed to come out from here. You have to pull something and let it filter through you. No one just makes stuff up. Yep. He's right. And you can, it, usually if you're, okay. if you're doing something really weird, it's like you're, just, you're, you're not making stuff up. You're like including something that is just really tangential to that, to that thing. You're combining things that are just very disparate. Something else. You, you looking for scratches? What do you think about not wanting to make art as a living, but just make drawings and conceptual, not concept art? I think that's great. I don't have the ambition to be a popular artist or something, but I do want to create the best I can and share my work, even if it's in small events or a gallery. Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I, I think it's weird that we would even be in like an art zeitgeist where we need to ask that question. It's just like, if you don't, there's nothing pressuring you to make art as a living. Just make art for, for the joy of it. You might be the kind of person who, you know, after you do it for a while, you wind up being like, oh shit, can I make this a career? Because this <laughs> yeah. is way better than most jobs. But you don't have to be that, you know? Just do it however it makes you happy. Do it however it makes you happy, baby. That's right. Do it however it makes you happy, baby. But galleries would accept it, though. I don't think a gallery cares if you're... It's like, well, 
even if you're not doing it as a living, as in you can't support yourself off what the gallery gets you, they don't care. I mean, if they think you you fit the the cohort of artists that that gallery represents, which is a big deal. You know, galleries are branded, right? They don't just represent random good artists. They're trying to curate it so that everything's kind of cohesive on theme. Um, if they think you fit, they're not going to care that this is your only job. They're just going to care that they think they can sell the paintings. If you're going for something really high end, like if you want to be represented by like a Gagosian or something like that, that's different. They're they're trying to make superstars. You know, they're trying to, it's very like high art, like rock star thing. So for them, they're going to kind of be interested in your whole image. You know, forget that you'd be a professional. They're going to need you to be like, an interesting person if you want to be represented by them. But like mid-range to low-range galleries, just like local galleries, things like that, they're not going to care. They're not going to care. <laughs> Did you just call me a cute little girl? Calling you? No, I'm not a cute little guy. girl. Or... <laughs> Every, everyone thinks you're so cute. No. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting an eyeful right now. They're checking it out. They're scoping it. Brother, they're scoping it. I'm a dog now. He's a dog now. Fanny, speak it to the microphone. Do you want to give us your opinion on your diet? All right. Fanny, any comments on your diet? Your diet? Comment? Comment? She gets nervous whenever I talk to her. <laughs> She's like, he's going to take more food away. <laughs> she comes to me for food because you're starving her. But I don't give it because I have to starve her too. Uh, she loves Danny. Says, Pareto principle with applying to anatomy, basically considering only the most important parts. Oh, ske skeleton and then just the base masses. If, if you really needed the 80% for 20% of effort, I mean, what people say is true. A, a good understanding of the skeleton is, uh, fixes so much because it, it is a big limiter of what's, what's possible. What are we doing? Holding hands? I'm transferring the dog. Oh, she, does, she hates sitting on me. Just oh. put her on the ground. All right. She'll just leave. She used to be a lap dog, but I don't know. She changed in her later years. She don't, she don't like uh, sitting on laps. Cheers, Felipe. Andrade. Can we see the fanny etching from the wedding invitations? That's I a good etching. I haven't seen it. It was, it, it was on our RSVPs, but I don't know where our, our extra RSVPs are. They're in a box somewhere. I'm sorry. I would show them if I had them, but I haven't seen them in a long time. They're somewhere in a box in a closet. Stop torturing the puppy. Let it eat itself to death. <laughs> if only. I wish I could do that. Uh, Have you seen James Lee's Chilling With Your AI Homie yet? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, you, you all know I agree with what he's saying. I mean, I've, I've been complaining about this for a long time now. See, uh, you know the ones with the cute little girls and pretty small dogs. So I have a vendetta against Empatisk. Get now. Empatisk. Uh, let's see. Any advice on making characters consistent in size and feeling grounded in an environment and like they're actually interacting with it and each other? Yeah, just use AI. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Fork. I remember Gary Meyer, rest in peace, gave us the best trick for getting people consistently in perspective the right size. Wasn't it like if you have a the horizon line if you have a character here, it doesn't matter where they are or how big they are, to be consistent, let's say you want a character in the back, you have to make sure they're the same amount of heads above the horizon line as the first guy. So if the first person's two heads above the horizon line, the other one has to be two, if you if they're the same height, obviously. Yeah. So that's that's that probably requires a whole tutorial. But yeah, look, just uh, look how much hair came off of her in two yeah, seconds. I'm just covered <laughs> now. The thing's hairier than me. She's a hairy dog. Uh but also just uh, keep in practice. Fix your microphone. You're getting a little quiet because you're. you're oh, my bad. My bad. Uh, what, what I would say is um, gather images where what you're talking about, such as characters and scenes doing things, gather them. Like say, don't go more than 20 and just do study of each one. Don't, don't do crazy like, um, like rendering, but like just get a feel for where the characters are, how big they are on the screen. Uh, are they cropped? Are they zoomed in? Is it is it fisheye lens? Like you get, uh, it would be. You have to develop the familiarity with how that feels, and then apply that to your own stuff. Oh, this is an easy one. Did you ever use sculpting to learn anatomy? We oh, both did. Oh yeah. Because Ray Ray Bustos, our anatomy teacher, uh, made us sculpt skeletons in clay. 
can you tell us how do you smudge with the eraser? I mean, yeah, you, um, if you get an eraser and you just have like a, a piece of your paper where you just script, draw a lot of graphite on it, you take your eraser and you just pick up the graphite a little bit so that it's no longer an eraser. It's more of a, uh, what is it? Blending? A blending stump? Yeah, this thing. Just use a stump. No, disgusting. I always thought this was the most heinous thing Ahmed does. It's the same thing, but it's, it's rubber. It's not the same not thing. It's disgusting texture it's erasing material. there's no control it's Ugh. it's randomly putting down and erasing when you do that it's insanity you got to master it you got to get good at it and it only puts down uh should i sell my cat to science absolutely science needs cats feed them the cats did you guys ever create something like ocs with backstories and stuff I we had to for school cats, but it wasn't cats. really a thing that i i just came up with an oc yesterday yeah. his name is satan the devil a furry? Yeah, there's a lot of world building. I've been world about. I, you yeah. know, I, I came up with this. Um, well, you're gonna drop some world building right now. Yeah, I guess I'll do a little bit. Yeah, yeah I came okay, up with this. Okay, so the world that Satan lives in is called Earth, uh -huh. and it was created by. I'll do a little bit of like the you know world building. You gotta you know what's the creation story, right? So, uh, in my creation story, it's called the Abrahamic God, and uh -huh. he's the God that is referenced in uh, these fake religions I made up called Christianity, uh, Judaism, and Islam, uh -huh. and he created the world. Uh -huh. And so it, it's kind of complicated, but in the process, he decided to make a permanent evil adversary that would he knowingly betray him and cause the fall of his most beloved creatures. So it's pretty, pretty sophisticated story. Pretty this is sophisticated. ground up world building, you're saying? I just said that, yeah. Yeah, I've got like a, one of those campfire apps where it's, it's like a wiki and it's like I go like... Yeah, let's call him Satan, and then I'm like, oh, where does he live? Uh, I name yeah, that place sure, like yeah. Hell, right? You know, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's you know, Sony has already sent a letter. You know, they want to option it, eighty mil, eighty five mil. What would it's you gonna do be with sweet. eighty mil? It's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be sweet. If you guys are wondering, all right, we'll go back to you. Drink water in a second. If you guys are wondering, um, is he like this all the time? Yes, it doesn't stop. It's it's how he is. Ahmed, you look sleep deprived. Stay healthy. I'm getting plenty of sleep. I just have dark eyes. They're you know genetic. That, you know that's a joke, right? They're really? all baiting you. No, they really. They all know why that you, you're insecure about. That. I'm not insecure about it anymore. But it's like I just got to clarify. Like I get plenty of sleep. I just have dark circles under my eyes. It's genetic. Leave me alone. Also, it's like I'm on vacation. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, leave him be. Favorite children's book? Uh, the caterpillar one. Uh, also, does do you, Harry Potter count? Harry Potter. I was a big Harry Potter fan. Children like the big ones. Like um, I didn't read those. I started with Dante's Inferno. <laughs> uh, the 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 shiny scale fish one. That was a good one too. Where can a beginner learn about world building? The Bible. That's funny to get that from someone called Nephilim. <laughs> <laughs> That's all very thematically connected. What is Nephilim? Is it's that like, like a, a Greek god or something? Uh, well, you know, it depends what conspiracy theorists you're asking about. They were angels that came down from heaven and interbreeded with uh, humans. That's where I get my powers. Or is that the Anunnaki? I can't remember anymore. It's all bullshit, though. You're all right. Unfathomably. Achilles, how are you? It's been a while. Is this it, whole stream has to stop. I need to figure out how Echoes is doing. <laughs> Yankee says, is it legally possible to plagiarize scripture? Uh, I don't think so. The I, most the scriptures are uh, all not copyrighted. They're open domain. There's actually a very interesting legal precedent for that. So um, there was a famous Supreme Court case where a company and a person who uh, had a book called the Urantia book um, tried to copyright the book. This was a contemporary book that was claiming to be divine inspiration. This this is a, an example of someone who, you know, went into a trance and supposedly did a transcript of what an, ang an angel was whispering into his ear. And they built a company around it, you know, it was a ministry and all that, but they tried to copyright the book. And the Supreme Court, uh, this is a, a, a foundational case for this, they decided that, I think it was a Supreme Court case, it might have been a different, uh, different, um, uh, like one of the circuit courts or something like that. But they decided that uh, 
things that were divinely dictated or inspired would not be protectable by copyright because a human didn't create it. Um, Ooh, okay. Human did the transcription, but copyright only protects human work. I was speaking in uh, tongue. I only learned that recently when I was doing AI research stuff, and it blew my mind because I read the Urantia book when I was like 12 years old. And I thought like, I'm the only, this is like a niche thing. Not, I didn't read the whole thing. I tried to read it. It, it was just like a weird book I was interested in. And um, I hadn't thought about it in years and years. And I was like, this book is a famous court case. Go no fucking way. It blew my mind. It was wild. Can we just 12 years old when everyone else was reading Animorphs? I had, I, my sister is 15 years older than me. Uh, right, and right. she had an eclectic library. And I was always interested in the stuff that she was reading. I was, I was generally more interested in the stuff that was on her bookshelf than uh, elsewhere. And um, so I would always flip through her books and I found tons of weird stuff. She was very into like far out stuff at that time. She's super cool. Yeah. Copyright was given to an angel. No, like, like I just said, it was not, you could not, you know, if, it, if it's not made by a human, you can't. And that stands for the AI stuff. The copyright office just uh, has guidance on that, that, the, uh, the parts of something made by AI are not copyrightable. That as far as they understand it and interpret the law, copyright is for protecting human work, human-made work. Uh, have you tried Lies of P demo? I have. Love the mechanics. I just didn't sink enough time to figure out all the things. But I your haven't name, tried it yet. Yev Yevon Polka. Pol if you're referring to the song, I love that song. What song? It's like a Finnish uh, folk song that's really upbeat and fun. I'll, I'll show it to you later. Yeah. It's great. If that's what that is. Have you ever considered having non-art jobs? I mean, jobs it, yeah. are a thing of the past, or so I hope. We'll see what the aliens do when they show up. Uh, uh, until like second half of high school, I, I was I thought I was going to be a scientist. I or an actor, right? That was very brief. I mean, oh. that that was just because people were telling me that. I never wanted okay, to okay. do that. People were just saying that'd be a good fit, and I was like. Like that's a hard life, it seems. Uh, I was like, I'll be a scientist or uh, an artist. And of course, I picked like the hardest one in the end. So Bruno asks, how to control AI usage when companies hire people all around the world? Like someone could use AI to photo bash and we can't notice at all. Is that a problem? It's definitely a problem. Yeah, I mean, it, if you use it and you're consistent with it, yeah, I mean, you could completely fool anyone and say you have a whole studio there's no regulating that. I don't know. It is a problem. I, I don't have good answers for that. I think that's, it's an interesting realm where we're all going to kind of see where we land, the what, whole, we, what we do as a society. The whole landscape is, I think, shifting. Um, after the review of Dune trailer, what were your thoughts on the movie? Uh, I, I, I was very disappointed with the trailer. I remember that video. I don't share the same opinions of that version of myself right now. But um, the movie was visually... A spectacle. It was good. Um, I think it was very boring, though. It's a very boring movie. Almost the whole thing was just so boring. <laughs> like, the, the, the I don't know, man. The stuff in part two should be pretty interesting, right? I hope so. Uh, Venerable Old Masters, what is the telos of art? Read with an echo and brass. Um, telos is in, like, what's the end goal uh i'm trying to remember my etymologies where is this is the same telos as in teleology is it like what's the what is the end that justify the means i'm not too sure clarify is not 42 please clarify oh what does the telos about read with an echo and brass purpose function i, th I think people make art for all sorts of different reasons there's no um I don't think you could say anything definitive or you're always going to be speaking in generalizations if you do that. Uh, I make art for the experiential joy of making it in the moment. Other people make it for the end product. They hate the process. Other people do art for reasons that are probably alien to a lot of people here. Like there's people who make art for purely political reasons. Or like taking down Disney. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like that. There's all sorts of different reasons to make it. Um, and I don't. I personally think it's foolish to claim that, you know, one of those is not art and one is and things like that. I just, it's all silly to me. I, um, uh, I, I tend to go back to the Grumbach quote, uh, there's no such thing as art, there are only artists. I think that is right. No problem, William. Thanks for joining. Um, there was a question I wanted to... Do you guys feel optimistic about the future with current technological advancements and social st instability? I think we'll, we'll have a rough 
turbulent transition, but I'm very, very optimistic and I can't wait to see things unfold. I'm uh, I'm generally, I'm an optimistic person at my core. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been complaining about AI for a while now and trying to do stuff about it, but um, that's not really normally me. You know, at my core, I'm a very, Med will tell you, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. Mm. I'm, happiness is uh, a, um, I think there's a lot of happiness to be had in life. I think that it's freely available. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna meditate I, for a second. Jeez. And I think um, I think that it's available for most people, and I think that there's paths towards it. And yeah, I just don't see anything changing that. You know, there's go there will be instability. There's cultural institutions that can be eroded. The vitality of things, even like art, can be eroded by certain cultural conditioning factors. But there's, unless you've tried it, unless you've tried turning inward and um, happen to have discovered what's in there, which can be, I, I don't know what else to say, white hot joy or something like that, you, you just won't be inclined to believe me when I say that. And it's like, once you have experienced something like that, there can develop a certainty can be developed that there's always room for goodness in the world no matter what happens and um i don't know that stuff is sort of a a pole star for me so that that's always kept me very optimistic i'm just very optimistic i think most artists are at their core i mean i don't think you really like deeply connect with a practice that needs you to basically worship god's good earth moment to moment. Uh, very few people do that if they're not optimists at their core. You know, maybe it gets glazed over with some cynicism over the years as they go on. But at their core, I think most people who get into art are optimists. What are the art meditations they're talking about? Uh, like the earlier videos on my channel, like the first. Um, this is like a guided drawing experience kind of thing? Yeah, I don't think you, like. Um, I don't watch your stuff. Actually. I know, I don't watch your stuff yeah, either. thank God. The first um 30 videos on my YouTube when I started my YouTube I made a video a day every day in like one month and those were explicitly guided that was me trying to get like the message I'm trying to get across here's how to do it and mm. it's just pick up a pencil and I guide them through their silences you're supposed to pay attention to the nature of your experience as you draw it's what we were talking about yesterday when you were like, do you think that overlaps with drawing? And I was like, I know it does. You know, yeah, okay. I've got right. 30 videos on my channel where I try to guide people through doing that. Great. Um, yeah. that's, what, that's what they're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I was just doing a quick meditation. I find that like um, if I feel nervous or nerves coming up, instead of just like pretending that they're not there, I'll just say, all right, everybody just leave me alone for like 30 seconds. And I do a quick breathing thing and just calm down a bit. So... No, I'm not fried. <laughs> Jesus. The thing yeah. is, people are... Oh, oh, sorry, you go. Yeah, I mean, we don't watch your videos. Too many cute anime girls. All right. I don't have any anime... Like, not a single anime girl in my gallery. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, those are Ahmed girls, not anime yeah. girls. I don't even... Okay, moving on. Nezumi says, The thing is, people are always optimistic about new tech, and statistically, some of it inevitably fails, no matter the amount of optimism people display. Define fail. I mean... You can never be sure. You can never be sure. But, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the fail condition for the whole thing to be considered a failure? Yeah. Uh, like, AI has already proven it's... As a technology if we if we gate off the ethical problems and all of the knock-on effects and the externalities and all of that it's clearly a successful technology it does what it claims to do right well, unless you're talking about a really out there claim but it makes images you know and, and it takes input it's like it does work it's it's it, not like other technologies that are straight up shams or something like that it is a real thing I think the question is will it fail the artists and have them have to suffer I think that's oh, what the yeah. question is I think that's up in the air. That is up in the air. And the, it's such a broad world that it's like, it's going to help some people. It's going to hurt some people. Like, it's just, it's a huge, there's too many different kinds of artists. There's too many different kinds of practices. It's, it, I mean, if you could please, because this is what I do. If you could just please zoom out into the future, like 300 years from now, just pretend you're looking back at our era 
compared to our own history and of how things unfold, like it's going to go down and up, down and up. But I, I figure we are strong, intelligent people will adapt, will find ways to make it work. We just don't know what that process is, but I have full confidence and no qualms at all with the future. Steven draws the best cute anime girl. So, yeah, they keep asking you, what's the backstory of uh, why you won't? I mean, you the only time I've ever seen him draw a cute anime girl, uh, it was Cecil Kim's class. It was a final. It was when he was bringing in his, like, brainstorm students in to check out the stuff. And I had, like, given you a crit on yours, and, like, you did it. And, like, as a thank you, you drew a cute anime elf girl, and you handed it to me. That was the only I time. Don't, I don't remember that You don't all. remember it? No. I'll have to try to redraw it, because I'm pretty sure I threw it out. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was cleaning out my... But, um, it, well, it might be in my... All right. We'll, we'll have a quest to find it. But, yeah, he did draw it. I have... I either have it or I threw it out. Um, but that was the only time. I do not remember that at all. Yeah. I, I can neither confirm nor deny... Maybe he's thinking of somebody else. I don't know. Nope. 100% it was you. Yeah. They, they're always asking me to do a cute anime girl just because I'm openly hostile to anime. So. Why don't you draw your thing that you usually do and tattoo it onto one of your demons? Like an anime girl. And That's like, not going to work on me. Yeah. You're not going to trick me. And it's not tricking you. It's the fact that I don't want to. you're overcoming something don't within want to. by letting it be outside of you. Overcoming what? your reluctance to draw what the people want. It's not something I'm interested in overcoming. Yeah. Uh, did you see the three-body problem trailer for Netflix? Yeah, it was like a teaser. I mean, it didn't, it wasn't yeah, like... Yeah, teaser with yeah, a trailer. Yeah, I saw that. Same to me. Could, um, could be interesting. Could be. Could I, be. I, I'll wait. I'll reserve judgment until I'm actually watching it, you know? There was... It looked like they put money in it. That's yeah, a good sign. Yeah. It looked expensive. That shot of Sofon walking on lava, that was pretty cool. Good sign. Good sign. But the, the white dudes, I don't know who those characters are supposed to be. I'm like, if that's who I think it is, I think they miscasted. It was, um, never mind. We'll see, we'll see when it comes out. Um, anime girls are Steven's shadow. What about cute goblin girls? Like, you know, like just grotesque goblins, but with like a wig and lipstick. We could do that right now. Get someone else to draw your porn. Look, man. You're almost that's at 100. That's what this all comes you're down al to. Look, you're almost at 100K subs. Did you know that? Yeah, That's yeah. just freaking crazy. Congrats. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you should give, give them just like one little. Don't even do yeah, it. Don't even do it. Yeah, no shit and don't even do it. But what you should do is just at least the eye with a little sparkle and like a, maybe like a blush right under it and an eyebrow. Give them that. Like a Sailor Moon one. Can I get a Sailor Moon? You guys, I can't, I can't deal with this guy. Draw your own porn. Stop porn. There's plenty of it out there. Masters, I will soon take the talent exam for the Academy of Fine Arts. I've been painting since I was five. What advice do you have for me? Anatomy, composition, <laughs> toning? Did you read that before you started reading no. it out loud? It's that like was the, impromptu. The pretentious tone really went perfectly with the content. Um, <laughs> you'll be fine. I mean, you'll be a talent exam. That's an interesting I've way to put it. That. I've never heard that phrase before. A talent exam. Let me. Uh, what advice do you have for me? Anatomy. Com I mean, just you know, show off. If you need motivation, read um, read stories about the pre de Rome. Um, that's the competition that like Bouguereau and Jerome used to engage in um, back when they tr they treated art like Olympic sport. Um, I think that'll get you excited. Pre de Rome stories are cool. That's P R I X. Pricks. D E and then Rome. R O M E. I never watched Futurama. He's asking if we're fans. I've watched a few episodes. Good show. Great show. I just never got into it like I did for like Rick and Morty or something. I used to watch it when I was a kid. The prevalence of anime manga art just shows we in the States need to defibrillate comics and graphic novels. Where are you reading that? Right here. Uh, what does defibrillate mean? I don't know. I, I think he means like resuscitate, like a defibrillator. Oh, defibrillator. Like, clear. Yes, we do need that. Our, our comics like uh, are not inspiring. The Spider-Mans, the Supermans, the Batmans are just kind of cringe. Dude. Like it's not made with love anymore. It's like, what does the industry want? We'll make money if we do that. I'll reserve judgment because I was never a comics guy. Oh, I, dude, I, they used to be good. I don't know. I never read comics. I was never interested. I, I used to flip through for the art, but I never read 
them. I've, the only comics I've ever read are V for Vendetta, Watchmen, um, and I have read parts of Berserk, Vagabond, One Punch Man, just because people wouldn't stop like insisting that I read them. Um, so I've skimmed through them. I read probably the first 10 chapters of Berserk or something like that. Ah, the little tensions between you two. You're great and funny team. We are. We have no chemistry. I, we shouldn't even be doing this. It puts me to sleep being it's around Ahmed. It's obnoxious. Like, it's his mellifluous <sighs> voice, his annoying character. You know Nothing you, interesting to say. You, you know how you're taking a shower and you're relaxing and you're, you've got your theta waves going because you're thinking about stuff? Um, he's the opposite. If you hear his voice, it cancels that. And now you have to be in this weird, almost primal state to match whatever he's putting out, yeah. which is why do I do that? Why don't I just stay? I don't myself? know, but I also am in full fight or flight. I, I could run screaming from this room right now because I'm totally repulsed by your presence. <laughs> hot tub stream when? Everyone wants to just see me naked. When I buy my house and I have a hot tub stream, I mean, hot tub, we'll do a stream there. We're just going to cook in there together. Yeah. They're going to see my nips though. I don't like yeah. that. 249 individual consciousnesses. Uh, Looks vibing like, yeah they're chilling they want to they want to hear what master draftsman ahmed al duri has to say live in studio ahmed al duri master draftsman the ahmed al duri story featuring steven zapata it's all about shapes all of it it's all about shapes what he's been on his whole life it's just one long shape trip shapes i only go to comics because of alex Malays and alex ross's artwork out yeah they're great artists uh the letter yeah what is the last book you read? Oh, I'd rather not say. <laughs> uh, in the country where I live, every university conducts its own exam and talent. Oh, this is okay. Um, please respect your work. Pe people, PL? I don't know what that stands for. I thought I'd get some advice from you. I don't. I think we kind of answered that a little bit earlier. Why don't you want to say what the last book you read? Is it, is well, it, I was is it very it. revealing? No, I was reading it because I was curious, and it's very. I would recommend it. Once I finish it, I'll, I'll get a better view of it. But um, <laughs> because a certain someone posted about it, there's a dangerous list in my head right now of like, well, it's really interesting, but uh, this and that. Should do it again. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not following uh, uh. at all. <laughs> I'm not no, following at all. It's, it's a useful book to learn about if you want to understand people who are trying to mess with you. So The 48 Laws of Power. Have you read it? Oh, okay. No, I haven't yeah, read it. It's, it's very controversial. A lot of it is like you need to overpower people in these subtle ways. And it's like, I don't want to do those things. But I'm overpowering I do, right now. I do want to see when it's coming. Yeah, he, you're, you're trying to, but I'm like also fighting it with my uh, um, whatever that is, spirit. My my last book I read. Well, I said I was reading the Atomic Bug. The last book I finished. Yo, Phil uh, Tomato. Hell yeah, he's awesome. A Blood Meridian. Uh, that was the last book I read. Yeah, you told me about that. Um, Let me see you book. finished it. Did you finish it the last time I talked to you? No. So after. you're still. So how do you feel about it? Blood Meridian. Oh, when we were in same San Francisco. McCarthy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, same author, M McCarthy. The one I had read. The one I had finished recently back then was uh the passenger that was the last book he put out before right. he died blood meridian he passed yeah he died recently okay. just a couple weeks ago blood meridian is a much older book of his did he pass after i met with you yeah he he passed like three weeks ago that's insane yeah. hyperion one that's that's quite a sci-fi book I, I think that that's a big one i tried to get through it um I, I, I used to listen to it while working out um it gets pretty intense have you read hyperion yeah yeah, Dan Simmons, I believe. But the, the, there was this um, whole chapter about this priest who was stuck in this alien civilization, and he tried to leave every time he left, or tried to. He would be electrocuted on a fence. You remember this? Yeah, he'd get, like, crucified he'd on an go. alien tree. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. Yeah, and so this dude's being tortured over and over again. He eventually transcends it somehow. Anyway, weird that. stuff. Science fiction mixed with this, uh, you know, old religion stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, Aquila says, The Passenger and Stella Maris is incredible. The ideas that McCarthy plays with uh, is like the Grand Canyon. I really love them. 
I, th I thought Passenger and Stella Maris were some of my favorite books I've ever read. Um, I would, like most of his books, I would never recommend them to anybody. Uh, they're just not, it's almost like you have to find McCarthy on your own and it's like you've got to find out that that vibes with you. Um, I think they're great books. They're just hard to recommend. They're really hard to recommend. Johnny Pearson gives me $10. Oh, yeah. Thanks, $10. Johnny. $10. You know how many donuts I could turn that into? Uh, 10 because yeah. Dunkin' Donuts has that's right. dollar donuts. That's, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up to the effing Johnny Pearson celebration show. Johnny, as we all know, is handsome, powerful, articulate, well-educated, fast, scary fast. Like, I'd say inhumanly fast. You know, he, he can just... You see him running, and you're like, it seems like he's going a little too far with each step. It, it just doesn't seem to add up, you know? And then you put him on a high frame rate camera, you take it over to the FBI image specialist, and they break it down. They're like, you're sure this is Johnny Pearson? You're like, yeah. And they're like, this is actually 100% absolute proof that there are non-human intelligences among us. We believe he's a skinwalker from another planet. Johnny, Johnny Pearson? Pearson says, oh yeah. Uh, Johnny Pearson says, just bought a book on the Ottoman Empire. Love you guys. Keep it up. I hope it's a good one. Enjoy your exploration of the Ottoman Empire. I was just reading about the Ottomans in a book called uh, Powers and Thrones recently, a history of uh, the medieval of Books the are boring. Ages. Can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. The book I would recommend to anybody is Speaker for the Dead by Orson Scott Card. I read Ender's Game, and then everybody says Speaker for the Dead is better, and I never read it. Wait, is it related, related to I think Ender's it's a sequel. Game? Sequel, okay. A direct sequel, yeah. The Ender's Game book was great. And in the movie, they screwed it up. Yeah. Well, I hadn't read... I don't remember. I read Ender's Game back in, like, seventh grade or something. It was a book they assigned us, so... Spoiler warning. The whole point of Ender's Game was that they were tricking these kids into thinking they were in a VR simulation fighting. So they took the best one, and they're like, yeah, you're still in your simulation. Go fight. But the whole time, they whole were time. actually fighting. Whole time. Whole time. I mean, they and in the them. movie, they, didn't, they just brushed over it. And, and it was, like, nothing. Anyway. Rude. Uh, there Great was, twist. Classic twist. Let's get back to art. Then let me ask you, says Anka, what are the elements that stand out for you in drawing? Question mark. For example, what is the most important thing in scene drawing? Light, composition, anatomy, etc.? Uh, the answer is the most basic fundamental elements can provide a structure that you can play within. Uh, and the elements that stand out for me is... is uh, Rigid structure, such as squares, rectangles, and then curved structure within that, um, that's when you get into calculus a little bit, but within that you can create rhythms that feel cohesive and, and connected. That, that's kind of what stands out to me in the drawing. So for a scene, yeah, like build it with structure, let everything feel like it's part of the right stage. Even the light, the way you're angling it, is it going to light the scene in a nice way that brings out your focus uh, or is it a bad way on purpose? There's a lot of things you can do with it. Composition, same thing that goes back to structure. Anatomy, do you want to paint people? If not, go paint landscapes. Don't study muscles. Who cares? Um, yeah. I agree. How often do you use standing desk in a day? You have one, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have one. Uh, I'm usually sitting, but a couple days throughout the week, I'll, I'll bring it up. Because I it just gets annoying to sit down. Uh, can we expect an art project from you guys in the future, like a collaboration? I'm not going to make any commitments. I can't do that we don't on do the that. whim. Uh, we may or may not end up doing something. Ahmed, since after Stephen, I am your best friend and sworn protector. Can I have Med's map for free? I think that's a fair trade. Moving on. Uh, I always found it funny that the Ottoman. Okay, moving on. All right, you got this. Uh, what, you want you, me to read Ahmed? Can you be gay with me? What the, I didn't. I said you got this before that even came up. I thought that was what you were referencing directly. Well, no, no. well, answer the question. No. Well, they said can. It's not m may or like can. Can can is it possible? No. Well, it's possible, but I. It's not for me. Maybe in a parallel universe, there's like a very flamboyant version of me that would be like, yeah, but I'm not that guy. You're homophobic. 
I'm, that was uh, the end of your career right there. I'm a homophobe. I mean, that was just a little. I just acknowledge that there's a parallel a universe version. A little too much. Who's like at the at the parade right now? I just saw someone's career end. This fuck crazy. Let Bring just, it on. Let me just bask in this real quick. Pretty wild. Have you guys kissed? Have we? Not much. Uh, not not too much. Thank you very much for your advice. It is really an honor for me to get advice from artists like you. Thank you. We're happy to help, Anka. Truly. Oh, I like this question. How has detox? Uh, from social media helped you more as a pro artist diamond icon x thank you for the question i highly recommend everyone do some kind of detox from social media or whatever you find yourself attached to routinely i uh, at first it was hard because like the the habit was there to not not to check social media or anything like that but the habit of sitting down and drawing with the mindset of this will be for social media i better make it good that eventually started to go away and then I could notice it creeping up and I could just acknowledge it because I can't, I'm not going to listen to it because I'm like, I'm not posting anyway. So uh, you kind of lock yourself out of that whole cycle and you end up finding a space where you're creating things. I still feel that urge to like take what I'm doing and mold it into a social media post. But uh, that part is dying a little bit more every time. So I'd say it, it has had a profound impact on what I've been doing. And as a result, the stuff I do and have not posted have been my most favorite paintings and drawings I've ever done. So, Ahmed has always done a lot of work that he doesn't share. He's always done that. 95% is yeah. invis invisible to the public eye. G g getting up, dude, taking everyone who's never tried it, take Instagram off your phone, take Feel everything it. off. Just everything forget that you, you don't were, need it yeah it's it's all just you're being so heavily conditioned by these things you know they're controlling your goddamn mind at a certain not your whole mind but it really if your art space is supposed to be a space to discover things for yourself and to be free it's like they really they put a lot of conditions on that just they get these worms crawl into your brain and you're always wondering what's going to work when are you going to post it how soon do you have it done it sucks I have a reason for doing this, but I just want to complete the, f the full turn. Mm -hmm. hey, what's up? I got to go back. To what? Oh, I'm looking this way. Take your time. Yeah, I'm doing Take it. your time. Guillermo says, hey, Stephen and Ahmed, it's me again. I just want to say once more that I'm grateful for all the knowledge and wisdom you guys are sharing with us today. Our pleasure, Guillermo. Cheers. Truly. I deleted my Twitter account after years of almost fanatical use and never felt better. It was a year or so ago. It's so freeing from all the drama. Did you dodge the Twitter bullet as well? Yeah. I, I never got on it. I got on Twitter too early, and I sort of did my wa missed the wave where it was super interesting, and I never got back on. Never got I got, I got a I opened a Twitter account like the year after it came out, like 2007. I think Twitter was oh, launched was, in. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter, I think Twitter was launched in like 05 or 06. And yeah, I, I made a account in like 07 um, and just, it was boring. There wasn't a lot going on. It wasn't like a news source and this big cultural touchstone at that time. So I had my fun with it just with my friends. I'm talking about like what, uh, a week or two or something like that. Um, and then I just lost interest and never came back. I was like, yeah, I know Twitter. Someone asked about what timer you use. So I'm showing them. Ask me about my timer? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I use. Yeah, the marathon. You can find it on Amazon. I got the same one because of him. Make, make sure you get the one. What One of them, it looks just like that, but it has a time limit. It's like a kitchen timer, so it only goes up to like three hours or something. Oh, okay. So make sure you get the one that has the full 24-hour timer. I mean, what about that Twitter account? <laughs> yeah, I had a Twitter account. It was called uh, Rough Outlines that I did NSFW sketches and... Oh, uh, I don't think I ever saw it. Girls doing things. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't feel comfortable with it on there, so I just took it down. I, I just don't want my name on it. Yeah, I mean, that's a dirty stuff, and you should yeah. feel bad about it. Yes, I'm ashamed. Did they ever, did they? Everyone loved it. <laughs> there was no qualms. Uh, everyone loved it? Oh, I bet. Yeah, there was no, it was, I just didn't want to do it. Oh, I bet. If you had a choice to choose between the movie industry and the game industry, which would you choose, both as a freelancer, game? Mov movie deadlines seem really tight. It seems like a hard life. Also, games is more creative freedom, I think, for artists uh, for now. We'll see what things do later. But, uh, yeah, you get, to, you get to make things and have fun and interact with them versus just watching it. Yeah, I even bought a uh, cutting. I can draw costumes from reference, but I can't draw it from imagination. How do you deal with bad memory? 
just keep using reference. The, I, you don't, hmm. It sounds like whenever I see that question, it's as though you're supposed to do it from memory. Yeah. I, I don't do that very much. It's like if I, I would just rather have the references there and, and be, let it be a part of the process. But eventually, if you do that enough, you don't need to have the reference of that same thing. Like, how often do you use reference when you're writing a sentence? You're like, what does the letter S look like? You don't because you've memorized it as a symbol. So over time, your brain can collect muscle memory, uh, I guess, Maybe it's a couple steps forward from that, but but over time it will become more second nature. And if you have problems just mem- remembering and you want to get things done, who cares? Just look at reference; it's fine. Yeah, there's t- there's tons of artists out there who they use reference for absolutely everything. It's like there's nothing wrong with that. That might be you. You know, you there needs to be a reason why you would do it from imagination. You know, you don't have to do it. And costumes specifically, like. There's a lot of, costumes are a good thing to reference. There's a lot of weirdness to wrinkles and materiality and strange structures and stitching and stuff like that. That's really hard stuff to make up unless you like know how to sew and things like that. It's, it's good stuff to reference, no doubt. I'm pretty bad at drawing inorganic things, but much better at drawing living things. On inorganic things, the line quality, its fluidity is so trash. Any advice, what artists to study? We need to make a, a course on how to, um, hmm, never mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, to answer your question, I think uh, what I would do to become familiar with inorganic things and trying to develop line work, I would get images of things that I would say is organic and has that quality that you think is there and trace them over and over again until your muscle memory feels what it's like to get that butter-like smoothness around the organic things and the fall off to show a bit more depth and perspective or form or volume. That comes from tracing. I I love doing it. You just kind of get an idea of the data and information required to pull it off. Um, Or you do, if you don't want to trace, then just like do it from observation. But I mean, if you want to just shortcut the learning process, trace away. If you can't draw without reference, does that upset employers? Example for posing, most employers aren't artists. They don't care. They don't, they don't, they don't care. Oh, you wish they cared. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. If only they cared. Dude. If only they cared one way or the other. They don't give a goddamn. He revealed to me something that I just completely missed when I was working at uh, Thinkwell, which is a theme park design thing. Uh, We did a bunch of projects of, you know, these these, uh, little areas and malls with rides and the, the octopus with the arms that goes up for the kids and whatever. Uh, but you told me that, and I should have known back then, that it was all for nothing because... Well, it's not for nothing, but it's just not for the reasons we... Yeah, thought. we're like, oh, we're going to design this thing so they can go make it and enjoy it. No, they just use these pitch decks to make money from investors. They didn't care about what we did. It's developers, man. I mean, man. R- real estate development is one of the biggest industries in the world. And, you know, it's one of the people who want, who are like, I want to be fucking rich. That's one of the things yeah. you go into. It's just like, that's how it works. You know, you need to get licenses. Uh, if you're trying to, if you're in a nation that the government has to approve you, you buying land to develop and stuff like that, you need a plan. You need a good one. You need to convince people. Like Cambodia. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff. It's a, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm just throwing you up. Uh, I'm, yeah, I wasn't at Lightbox last year. I'm, I might go this year. Well, not, either not, I won't have a table. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was just trying to read the question that you were answering for anyone who is listening to this later. Um, will either of you gentlemen be at Lightbox is what Matt Brennan asked. Huh? I, I plan on going. Oh, I didn't see that question. I saw oh, you one. were looking at a different one. Yeah, it was oh, the one under it. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, you're going for sure. I haven't decided yet. I might fly there and not attend Lightbox, but just be in the area to hang out with some people. Why do I give away that private information so publicly and so freely? You know what? You don't have to say it. I'm going to be in Alaska. You don't have to say anything. I won't be there at Lightbox. (laughs) For someone interested in getting paid for character art, what do you guys think best way to make an income in character design is? Should I strive to work for studios or find different avenues? If I was answering this question like five years ago, I'd have more certainty. Right now, I, I don't know. Uh, but let me think about it. I would say yeah. make sure that you actually want to... Sorry, while you think about it. No, I like where you're going with that. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, make sure that... 
if you're gonna do that, make sure that you actually know what character design is. Like, because if you think character design is doing cool, illustrative drawings of characters and being very free about things, it, in a lot of places it just isn't. You know, if you're working on a video game or something like that, there's tons of design requirements on it and a lot of the work is just very dry. It doesn't look like happy, fun, explosive sketching um, for most people. It's problem solving and it can be very boring. You know, you're just piecing things together, doing a lot of research. It's not, I don't know you, but I'm saying like, if you have this image in your head that being a character designer is a lot of doing this and doing gesture drawing and stuff like that, it's that for 20, 20 minutes. And then it's weeks of carefully adjusting things and doing notes and things like that. That's real character design, right? So if that doesn't sound like what you want, you don't want to be a character designer. You want to be a, an illustrator. You want to be someone who draws characters. And, and if that's all you're interested in, maybe stay away from the studios, just get popular on the internet and get a Patreon and things like that. That might be the way that's better for you. Um, Did you think about it? No, I think you answered it perfectly fine. It just led up to another question that I want to ask the audience. There's 230 people, roughly. Uh, this is such a layered question. How many of you are interested in becoming artists? Like where your day-to-day -day is you're making art and you're just enjoying life. Is that the goal? Get that poll from them. I'm going to use the restroom. Is there a poll function that I can use? Uh, I actually don't know. There might be, but I don't know how to do it. Hey, I need a zoomer in here. How do I do a poll? <laughs> oh. Every day. Okay, okay. Now, what about art makes you want to do it? Like, what's driving you all to be here and talking to us? Like, why are you here? What made you click this video to be like, yes, this is part of my vibes? I'm at, I'm in my art job. I'm already thinking about my exit. We all felt that. Yeah, we all go to the studio that we really want to be in. And, you know, a year in, I'm like, ah, I'm going to do my own thing. So I, I like, no, I make art for me and I make m my money with my day job. I like that because it's like you provide stability by one means. That way the money doesn't contaminate your art process. That's great. I don't actually know. I'm just trying to stay consistent, being able to flesh out my ideas. The sound of the scritchy scratch of the pencil and the texture of the paint. I like that answer. That's what makes you draw. Whoa, we're getting a whole waterfall of text here. All right, I'm going to scroll up a bit. I want to keep drawing as a hobby, but doing creative stuff like 3D for work. Fair enough. I'm completely unmotivated and hopeless. Get your sleep good. Work out consistently so that you give your body a fighting chance of feeling good and see how that affects your art. Well, I used to be a marketer and copywriter. Go. That's the goal. Everything, the community, the game, like process of creation, improvement. Oh, that's a cool one. So you kind of gamify the process of learning art and, and uh, being involved with it. That, kind of treating it like an MMO. I like that. I was trying to. For me, it's not about the job. I just want a way of expression. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. The, the, the whole chat just jumped because there's so many. Um, I'm here working on commissions. I hope I never have to open commissions ever again and just draw for myself. I feel you. Yeah. Hope, hopefully you get to that, you know, crest over that hurdle. And, it's a bit stressful as a char character 3D artist. Lots of problem solving and last minute changes is rough. I remember I, I, would, I would watch the 3D art team and they did a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of changes. And they would kind of reach out to the concept art team sometimes and say, hey, what the heck is this? And we'd have to flush it out. And it, it's quite a pro process. Um, within cells, I took your course, Ahmed, and you're both inspiring dudes. Basically why I'm here for the stream. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad the... Um, course is helpful What's the poll I couldn't figure out how to do the poll but they're giving me their answers as to why they're here watching the stream I'm like what are you guys here for um, art wise what was the consensus really? everyone's different man like some people uh, have regular jobs and just do it for fun as a hobby some people are like well I want to do it for a living hmm. 
Growing up, I had a lot of ideas and worlds with characters and emotions that I couldn't really explain or express with words. I am a very visual thinker, which led me to wanting to be an artist, says, says Art. Yeah, amen. Sean Fitzpatrick says, don't know, just compelled to draw. Yep. Hi, Sean, by the way. That's the way to go. What? Uh, yeah, a lot that's of people, the idea. Yeah. A lot of people are not here because they're going for um, an industry life. That's They're definitely not heading towards that. And I think that's why I wanted to ask that because I wanted to see evidence. You talk about this and you were telling me, because in my mindset, one of my snags for releasing another course is like, well, people only want it so they can go get jobs. And you're saying, yo, Med, people love drawing. People yeah. love art. And I'm like, really? I do, but I, I don't know. I was stuck in my own small world in my head for a long time. But I'm glad. Yeah, it seems like people do love art and that's great. I want to be an artist and be serious, but honestly, I hate the industry and I fear it would crush my spirit, but I want the experience to do my own work. I hope you get to do that too. The industry can be pretty rough, but if you try to read the industry and find a way to navigate through it in your own way, you might come out on top or you never have to do anything you don't want to. <laughs> How many tickles does it take to make an octopus happy? Tentacles. Ten tickles. God, I hate that shit. <laughs> wait I hate you, puns. Wait till you become a dad. Wait till you become a dad. We'll see. It might change my bio biology. Anarud Bansal says, I watched DBZ as a kid and couldn't stop drawing. By the time school was ending, I learned there is an industry, so I went in the pro art direction. But I'm 24 now. Learned I love art art a few years ago. See, people get pulled into art art. Great, great. My psyche is being updated with new data. This is a firmware update for me. Ankola says, not interested in doing art for the markets. I'm interested in ontological experimentation. See, that's the real deal. Do you know Akos? Uh They post in the stream. Well, I don't know them personally. He's way back from my server. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. He's, he's one of the original founders of our voice chat back in the day. Interesting. Yeah. Good es times. Estras Muno says, I like anime waifus. Big anime TDs are a huge motivator for a Great. lot of people. That's wonderful. Huge motivator. I can't say I agree with that. But <laughs> I understand it's a huge motivator. It's, it's a primal need and desire, and it happens to show up as an uh, anime, so... Med is lying. He doesn't. He doesn't know me. Okay. Danke schön. I'm also 24 and just want to oil paint. No idea what I want to do professionally. People just love making art. That's all it is. I'm, and I think I'm it's e it. I think it's easily to wind up. I think it's easy to wind up like pushing it towards a direction like industry and jobs because you want a social bucket for it, but okay. I think especially now, people are less inclined to do that. Certainly, it seems to me less inclined than people were when we were getting into it. You know, I didn't know a lot of people who were doing art without a, an end goal in right. mind, but it could just be happenstance of who I was exposed to and all of that. Why is the dog looking at you like that? Because she's hungry and she wants food. She's hungry all the time. She is spiking the camera. That's very unprofessional. What's it mean to spike the camera? You, like if you're recording a movie or something like that, you accidentally look into the camera lens mm. and it's clear you're making contact with the audience. I'm a freelance illustrator and getting into game industry, right? See, there's one. There's one. <laughs> there's one person who did. Med, is the old server still active? I, I think it's still a, a tomb. I haven't been there for a long time. Yeah, didn't you like hand it over for other, for uh, other people to use? For a minute. But then I took it back and said, you guys make another server. We're just going to close this one. Uh, but, but reopened, but we just don't hang out there. I, I do not hang out at, on Discord at all whatsoever in the last uh, year or so. Maybe a couple times, but I don't do it. Ahmed, do you speak other languages? No, nah, just English. No. Nah. Arabic and Spanish. But very, very rudimentary Spanish. It's not like I could give a speech. I could just ask where stuff is. I have a love for pretty most visual creative practices as well as music. The creative act has always been one of the most exciting things in my life. I think it is for 
people who engage it, it tends to be. People are generally very energetic about art. That's why they're into it, you know? Great. You guys go way back, right? No. Yes. I want a Spanish oh. convo with you both now. Hola, mi amigo. Como estas? Hola, como estas? Estoy bien. A, a ti, que? Ahmed, que quieres hacer hoy? Creo que quiero comer um, la cena. Is that dinner? Yeah. Que quieres comer? A mi no me importa. Um, mi lamo Ahmed. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. Increíble. Es muy increíble. No sé qué vamos a hacer, pero a mí no me importa qué, qué vamos a comer. Qué sí. vamos a hacer, qué vamos a hacer. Pero quiero comer. I'm a system engineer, developer, and I'm working as a graphic designer, but I love drawing, and now I'm getting in the comic way here in Colombia. Hope I can find a way to marvel. Ha, ha, ha. You can. Do it. Do it. Comics. <laughs> People still love comics. People still love comics. I comics are great. I think I want to work in the industry. It sounds fulfilling to work on a team of artists. You got to get on a good team. Yes. Get on a good team. If you're going to go for the industries, go all the way. Aim high. Go for the best. Do it. Go all the way. Don't wind up middling and stalling out and winding up in a mediocre situation because those are hard situations to be in. And it'll burn you out. And the problem, that, the problem with that is that it'll burn out your creativity. And then it'll feel like something has like really happened to you. And you don't want that. What's your ethnic background? You're Greek, right? <laughs> people, people at Art Center used to think I was Greek. Um, Yo, I'm Latino. I'm, you know, my, you both my like, parents are from Colombia. You look like um, the lead actor in uh, The Expanse. I've told you this many, many times. So, did you look at him? Yeah. Yeah. You guys could be brothers. I don't agree, but you're a fool. I don't agree. <laughs> the industry has a huge disconnect between the great people you work with and the giant faceless corp you work for. That's what I'm saying. This landscape is about to shift. Y'all better be on top of it. Giving a middle finger to the industry. Find a way to do it. You can do it. Just, you know, be, be careful with whatever you tie your art up with. Because uh, most people, sometimes you hear in art circles, like you got to be a professional. You got to separate yourself from the work. You can do that to an extent. You can sort of like consciously close your heart and like separate your work from your identity for small periods, I think. But I've actually come to believe that in a, in a long-term sense, that's almost impossible for everybody. So it, it's, it's your art. Of course, you're personally attached to it. Of course, it matters to you. Of course, it's coming from within, right? Even if you're trying to like make it more objective and stuff like that. So be very cautious about what you choose to tie it up with because the changes that it goes through and the things that happen to it are going to affect you. Be careful. Stick to your values. Be cautious. Maybe I am a little sleepy. I did wake up earlier. Well, we have been going for two hours. Oh, we right. We, have, yeah. we haven't really eaten since breakfast. Now we're, we're going into the twilight era where it's like we should wait for dinner instead of, you know, it's like yeah. it's dangerous. It's dangerous. You just had a snack? Right. I had that. Do you want a fiber bar? I could get no, one for you. Um, let's see what people are saying. All right, look, I, I can tell. Ahmed is getting a little tired. I'm so awake. He, he's starting to power down. So high energy. Let's lightning round it. Come on, give us some. Give us, give us the good stuff, man. I like, know. Us, you know. The come on. Is fit. Yeah. Now do you? Now you look at the dog. Fanny's like, what the fuck was that? Lo siento. Don't do that. All right. Let's see. Uh, Steven kind of looks like Anthony Ramos. I don't know who that is from Transformers. No clue. Is this a new podcast? This is the first episode and only episode. Only episode. We're not doing this again. Dackler says, I'm tempted to make extremely controversial and outright violent art, but I believe I'd have to produce it under an alias, lest I'm blacklisted from getting any job. Don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I mean, it depends how violent and how controversial. There's definitely... It, it, just, just to be perfectly honest, there is definitely a level of violence and controversy that, yeah, will reflect on you and will affect your viability commercially. It's a, something you're going to have to investigate in your own heart, my friend. You a coffee or a tea guy? Uh, coffee in the mornings, tea the rest of the day. Ne Nephilim says, what's your favorite Tool album? Hit him. Uh, Hit him. Uh, lately, it's been Undertow, the very first one, or the, the earliest stuff. 
but I do really like Ten Thousand Days, Lateralis, I, all of them. You can't you can't pick a favorite. But right now I'm listening mostly to Undertow. Have you seen Happy Tree Friends? Uh -huh. I, I have not. Oh, I don't think so. It's like the early two thousands. Mm. It's just like this uh, very cute Powerpuff Girls style animated fluffy bears and stuff, but completely violent. Chopped limbs, blood, bones, mm. everything, guts. I know what you're talking about yeah. now. Yeah, I never saw it, but now I know what you're what you're talking about. Deftones are great too. Yeah. You guys going out to eat after this? If so, where? I don't know. We might order. Let's Someone give them a name. specific location to see if someone Come shows up. Come find us. Come find us. Personal art versus jobs are two different things. That's for sure. You betcha. Opinions on whether you should post your rates online for commissions. Um, I think for like personal commissions, like if you open a commission sheet and you're just looking for individuals to commission you, I, I've never done that, but I think that's probably a good idea because for people who are not like companies or, you know, really hiring, like as part of their business, they're not hiring art. I think that it saves a, a, a non-art business person, let's say a normal person, it saves them this extra step of wondering what your rate is. And if they just see the number and know they can afford it, it would make them more inclined to buy it. If you are trying to get commissions from companies, do not put your rate out there. Do not, do not just put your business out there. You're supposed to negotiate with them and different companies have different budgets and you should try to get the highest rate possible based on their budget. So, um, yeah, so if the commissions are from personal people, just non-art business people, they're not a company or a job trying to use your art for a reason. They just want you to draw their D&D &D character or something. I think it's a good idea to put the rate out there. Anything besides that, do not put your rate out there. Keep, no, this, this negotiate. Guy, this guy scares me. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> mm. I don't know what to say about that. Um, See if this conversation is going to stay up after it ends, right? No, sorry, we're yeah. doing this just as a live thing and then deleting it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never delete the streams for anyone who's been. They're all up there. There's tons of them up there. Ahmed, I met you in Japan a few years ago, thanks to your red cap, when you won the Daba Limits competition. Any chance to see you again there? Wow. Uh, well, uh, I'm glad I got to meet you. Um, yeah, I, do, I, I think I might be going back for another competition sometime in the future. And of course, it's Japan. I'll be back. It's Are Japan. they still doing it? I, yeah. Although, oh no, I recently went to New York here uh, for one of their things. And it was, I didn't really, it, it, they're trying to do like the NFT stuff. And I'm like, right. yeah. Uh, it's, you know, changing. it's changing. I thought that stuff died. You know, um, how is this still a thing? Um, I don't know. Adam Pollard says, I'm 19, almost 20. I want to work in the industry, but I think it'll take a few years of working any old part-time job around town while I build up a portfolio. Solid choice? Absolutely. I, a lot, dude, the, the life of doing nothing but making art is not for everybody, especially if it's like really career focused and you think you're going to like grind art and build your skills for eight to 16 hours a day. Almost nobody is cut out for that just on your own, no school, no friends, nothing. That's a really unhealthy way to live. That's like barely a human. I think for most people, it's a better idea to have a normal job and to have something else that you do, the job counts. Even if it's a, a job that is not the best, even if you kind of hate your job, a lot of people, the sum of that is that while they're at work, it's increasing their, their crazy desire to make more art right? Because you're, you're just doing something you don't want to do, and then you can channel it into your work. Does it have its own challenges? Yes. There's going to be things you need to overcome, but just because you have the time to do nothing but work on art doesn't mean you will, and you might make yourself crazy. I don't think it's a good idea for most people. Tips for slowing down while painting drawing. Most people struggle to slow down because of a false hound that they have chasing them in their mind. You need to find out what that is for you. You either think other people are expecting something. You think that you need to do it for some social media reason. You think that you need to have your portfolio ready by the time you're such and such age or else you failed. It's all shit you're making up. It's all stuff you're making up. So you need to find out what that is that's yapping at you. And once you see it identified and let it dissipate or unravel the personal baggage with it, it's much easier to be patient and just slow down. 
uh, I did the thing that they do on TikTok where they play somebody else's video and they go. <laughs> oh, that's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate uh, it. I just want to add to it. Uh, you could do this exercise just to witness how you function, just, like just how your body and physicality function. So you say you're going to do these drawings um, and maybe in like one minute, two minute, five minute chunks and in intervals. So one of them you're trying to draw fast so you can witness how that feels like and point to it and trying to get it done quick and like rushed, right? And then for the next version of it, let's say you're drawing the same thing, an apple, whatever, go as slow as possible and you, you breathe for every stroke, like hold four seconds. You're forcing your patience and then you draw the next stroke. And then you, going between the two, you, now you now have these two specific feelings that you can point to. And then as you go to do your uh, art, now you can get a feel for where you are on that whole spectrum. And, um, and once you've gotten that gauge of range, you can catch yourself. Uh, actually, I, I've, I've done this where um, th there's a tell. If I'm drawing and I'm like chewing gum or something and I'm getting stressed out and rushing it, I start chewing the gum faster. So there's a specific place I can point to to say, oh, I could slow that down. So when you're doing that exercise, you've got A and B. Uh, now you know the range. Now which place do you want to be when you're creating the stuff, adding to what he was saying? Just a practical thing to try. Amen, brother. Koei Zoe says, first off, I'd like to thank you both for everything you've put out there. Do you guys have anything you do when you feel like you're losing your spark inner child, whatever you want to Where is it? call it uh, up top? It's like third down. Uh, is there anything you do when you feel like you're losing your inner spark inner child? Um, I... Nothing I can talk about on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I don't really experience it as... Um, I try, I try not to take it so heavily, you know, like I, I never frame that to myself as I'm losing my spark or my inner child at, at, at this point, if I feel I'm in a slump like that, or it's low energy, it, I don't see any more, any reason to let it spiral up and explode out into this identity thing of like, I'm losing something like you put it. It's just, I'm tired this week. You know, there, there's that, that's not a big deal. I can just rest. Um, or I just feel like I'm not grappling with an interesting idea. That, that's really all feeling like you're losing your spark or something like that is. It's just like you're just getting a little bored. So I can just solve that problem very easily. I'll just read a new book about something that's very challenging or something like that, and that'll usually push my brain or in one way or the other. Um, as a generalization, 99% of the time, thoughts like that. I'm losing my spark. I'm losing my inner child. I'm not a creative person, things like that. They're never actually about the art. Almost never. You're just depressed. You're, you're just not, you're not feeling good about life or yourself. And that that's really an issue that can be addressed with other things, with life stuff. Rather, It doesn't need to be solved in the art. If you get through that, you'll see that it was never in the art. The art was fine. The art was fine. To add to that, uh, you might also be dealing with, okay, so it's not the art, it's the potential depression or your life, et cetera. Um, but the key word is the, the inner child. So at some point when you're a small kid, the world started to formulate how you function in the world. That's just, you're just a little, just like everyone, you get programmed by your experiences. Uh, some of them can be traumatic. Some of them force your inner child to hide because of pain. And so you kind of put that part of you away. Uh, and so what, what you ought to do is let's say you start a drawing and you're hoping that your inner child kind of comes out to play and you do your fun stuff. Uh, and then it's not happening. And, in, and even imposing that on yourself makes it hard to do. Um, so I would take a step back, journal, therapy, whatever you need to do, and ask yourself, why do I feel this way? What happened? Was there a certain thing that made me feel unconfident with my you know, shapes or drawings. Was it in third grade? Is it? And, and I think everything you do today and everything that's making you either happy or depressed is a result of an action or a series of actions from your past. So if you can trace back to it and then sit with that discomfort, let's say somebody made fun of your art. Um, actually, I can give a specific example. I was in seventh grade and my friends, my friends, I don't think I really had very many friends. Uh, they were really into Gundam Wing and Gundam stuff. 
and I, I thought it'd be cool. So I, I was at home, I was drawing in my new sketchbook and I did this like sketch of a Gundam and I brought it to school and I showed one of them, like, hey, check it out, it's, it's a Gundam. He looked at it, he's like, huh. no, it's not. And that hurt, that killed me. That, that made me feel like no matter what I do, if I show something that I'm excited about or proud of, it will be shamed, rejected, and, and validated. So um, I had to go back to that, sit with that feeling, and it's uncomfortable. It's like, oh, I feel like this, these, they don't like me, they're not accepting me, and blah, 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 blah. And I sit with that for as long as I can until I'm bored of it. And, and as that feeling sits in, I'm, I'm looking around, it's not as uncomfortable anymore. I even can kind of make fun of how I used to be like, oh, look at me, I'm trying to use art to be friends. And when I can laugh about it, that little module that was in my past is now has a little a ribbon on it. It's, it's been healed with humor, uh, at, at least for that example. So if you can find moments in your life that have punched you in the face, uh, try to go back to them, resolve as many as you can, so that when you go to draw, you don't have to think about it at all. It's just natural. You're just back in the child state. And that's, I think, with meditation, uh, retreats, understanding yourself as much as you can, and then forgetting that for a while and just letting yourself be. You might, you might find your answers there. Mm. I feel like I really just took a whole 30-minute no, chunk out of that. That was, that was like... Yeah, maybe two minutes. Oh, dude, You're all right. I, my sense of time is uh, bad on streams. I feel like I missed a lot. Catch anything? I've been watching. That's all right. We could just keep going. Okay. I, I didn't see anything uh, essential or really leaping out. What Struby? I mean, um, go on. What, what he's saying, he or she, they heard this thing recently I love, which is that confidence is actually the default state. I agree. Uh, insecurities are just layers on top of you. I would, I would add to that as a result of just your survival, your need for social survival, physical survival, um, feeling comfortable. And it'll make you go away from your true self just to survive. And then you have to find your way back in time. You know that, that Picasso quote was, I, I spent a lifetime learning to paint like a master. No, no. Whatever. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, I think it was... Uh, no, we, we don't have to go into that. Um, yeah. I have a friend with that exact problem. He has a tendency to compare himself with other people. And whenever he draws, he just hates himself. It's a classic problem. It comes up all the time. All yeah. the time. We, I deal with it to this day. Just know that me and him are not perfect. No one is. We are all like dealing with our own frustrations and our own coping mechanisms. If so. it, there's very few artists who um, have a, just as a baseline, there's very few artists who have like a healthy relationship to the practice just to begin with. There's so few I think that just fly steady through it. Everybody needs to learn how to manage their mind in this journey. And if right when you said that, Kim Jong Gi comes to mind. It's like he was he was the child state when he was doing all that stuff. Yeah, he seemed all right. Ian McKaig. Ian McKaig claims to have no anxiety, which That's, is just like rare. It's just very rare. You yeah, know, a very good childhood. <laughs> most most everybody, it's like all of the pain you're going through, the confusion, all is totally nor the norm. The norm. It's just part of the journey, you know. I'm the best, says Acolus. That's good to know. At least now it's done. At least now we know who the best is. <laughs> now I've always know known. Any tips for a space for you to draw in or the importance of it? Lately I felt like my urge to draw lies outside my home. Yeah, go out there. Go draw I, in the world. I was going to say the same yeah, thing. Go, go take your sketchbook. It's a beautiful place to draw. If that's what your body's telling you, lean into it. See what happens. You don't. There's there's this idea of like I'm going to go home and do the work and do the thing at my drafting table because I bought it. But I do my best work at coffee shops, at least best ideas, and I'm just sitting there sketching and and it it, un, it fractals out into something I didn't expect. But if I was at home, I, I, I'm more limited by whatever swirling around, uh, at least in my mind space there. Um, rest in peace, Master Kim. Rest in peace. I just, I was looking at he a runs. and I lost it. Wish the streaming longer. Will you guys do this again? No. Sorry, it's the only time. Absolutely not. Yeah. Unless I move to New York. No, no, no. This, we don't do it. A to Z, only it's one episode. It's not happening yeah. again. It's not Never. happening again. Hung, he knows about my drafting table. I don't know what that's in reference to. Hung. I believe it's pronounced Hing. Hing. Is that like a Yoshi? Yashi. Oh, it might be. Yeah. I, I, Yashi going hang. Every time I see that, I just think of Lindsay. She'd always type that. 
Hi, I've been focusing on writing for a while and now trying to make a portfolio to show the story and game. Do you have any tips in pitching an idea to studios or any tips how to proceed with it? Um, some companies have open submissions, so you should look on their website and um, see if they do. Usually it's in the about or contact or they'll have a submissions page. Like if you um, have a, for I, I believe Dark Horse Comics, for example, has um, open submissions. You can just go on their website and they give you a guide and like a legal disclaimer of like, we are interested in seeing your project and we might publish it, just send it to us, you know? And Image Comics does that too. I might be thinking of Image, I might be wrong about Dark Horse, but mm -hmm. um, the big companies like that, some do have open submissions. So do research into that, Think pl places that you know put out stuff like what you're interested in. A lot of the bigger ones, like if we're talking like, if when you say studios, if you mean like movie studios, for the most part, you do need an in. You need an in to pitch to them. So. Uh, an agent is usually the in that most people have, and the you need to shop to get an agent. So you wouldn't send straight to the studio. You would go to the agent's websites. If you just search, you know, script super um, uh, screenwriter agent, if that's what you're gonna have, right? If you're gonna have a a deck that's mostly a story, you know, the the script or treatment or something like that. You look, you Google that, you find agents, and most of them are looking for clients and. Um, a good agent doesn't take any money from you unless you cut a deal, right? It's sort of like a, a lawyer working on compensation um, uh, or whatever the word is for that. Um, and you send them the stuff, they review it, and if they think it's actually realistic that you could sell it, then they'll be your in at the studios. I'm gonna leave it there because that's a complicated world. I could go on a, lo a, lo a lot about that. And I don't know much about it. I don't know what, much about I it. I can't really add to that, yeah, sorry. Being single helps you manage yourself and find true meaning. Yes, absolutely. I feel like I did all right. Yeah. You know, I'm married. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you're a special case. <laughs> I'm all just right. fucking around. I'm obviously yeah. psychotic. I try my uh, best to help him, but I don't think he listens to me since it's me he is comparing himself to. Well, you know, brothers have powerful conditioning relationships with each other. It might be something to explore. Cain and Abel. It's real. It's real, man. Uh... How many of those submissions get skimmed for ideas though? The, the notion that movie studios, agents and stuff like that want to steal your idea from a script is, as I, I think Ahmed will agree, um, but from my experience in the entertainment industries, it's very clear that that is just not real. That is self-aggrandizing from the side of people who don't understand the industry. Once you've worked on games, big projects, something like that, it is so clear that the idea is not the end all be all. It's about how you make it. It's about the finish. It's about the actual production of the project. You could have the best idea in the world and you can do it in a way that makes it the shittiest idea ever. It's about the nature of the execution. So they would, no one, no professional worth their salt is trying to steal your stuff in that way. If they skim it and the idea feels worth stealing, they will bring you in. They will try to get you in the room because you they get like, dude, this is just someone who had this idea. Let's get them to be involved and option it and stuff like that. And normal people get optioned. It happens all the time. It's not that rare. It really is not that rare. Um, they want you in there. The ideas matter and they, they want the person who actually had the idea so that they know how to flex it and what matters in it. And then they know that it's like, even if you have that, it's still almost impossible to pull off a great idea. It really is almost impossible. So it just, it doesn't happen a lot. It's, it's not, that's not real if that's what you're worried about. Just go get an agent, go get an agent. You're, you're telling, I think a lot of people tell themselves that because they're just like, they don't want to ever find out if their idea is actually interesting. You know, they just yeah. want to live in fantasy land forever and just tell themselves, oh, it's an amazing idea that I'll die with. It's like. It's polishing a golden egg, but yeah. only you see it as gold. Yeah. Uh, guys, can you wrap it up? I want to make some dinner. <laughs> That's actually a compliment. Uh, there was something I want to read. Do you guys ever feel like you're not a real artist, but someone LARPing as an artist and posting <laughs> about it, but not making it? Asks Dackler. Yes, I feel the imposter syndrome every time. 
but uh, but it's like maybe I am the fake like you fake it till you make it, it's weird I don't it's best you just not think about it do the work post it yeah I would agree I I used to feel that more often I don't really get the imposter syndrome anymore not not because I feel like I know I'm an artist I think those labels have become very uninteresting to me it's like I don't I don't care what someone would say I am. The labels, the labels really, really matter when you're still on the playground. Yeah. When you graduate from recess and now you're just out in the world, no one cares. You don't care. You shouldn't care. Um, yeah, the, the real world is, doesn't function the way we think it does. Uh, I'm late and I can't turn my audio up, so I don't know what y'all are saying, but it's good to see you guys. It's good to see you too, RP. I'll try... I, I can't do letter forms. I don't know what to say. It's good to see you, RP. Games by uh, Mark Wolf says, Steven, I don't think you understand how good this stream is. You two need to do this again. There's so sorry. much expertise, talent, and knowledge on screen right now. It's mind-boggling. We fail to understand. It. Yeah, I mean, we just we, don't get it. Yeah, know? we don't get it. But yeah. we appreciate you guys being here. I mean, we're yeah. just... I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, yeah. just sitting around talking about it. If the microphones weren't on, this is very much it's how thing. our conversations I, sound. I would just be facing him. Yeah. That's <laughs> but I, I'm a narcissist, so I'm just staring at myself the whole time. I looked at you a couple of times. A few times. I'm like, you've literally given your physical life to art. Why not feel like an artist? Because I don't know what feeling like an artist means. And if it means what I'm already feeling, then yeah, then I'm there. The label artist is useful if you want to appear a specific way to other people. Yeah, I agree with that. It, it's a useful label in a game context. Like if you understand that it's not some ultimate thing, then yes. It's useful. It, it becomes maladaptive when you think it's very real and it matters if other people think you're an artist. Oh, and, yeah. You're and playing you, the wrong game. Yeah, you're just totally... It, it's like you're in an eternal game of tag on the schoolyard and you, you're never going to grow up. You no know? crow, dude. Are you okay? <laughs> Is it stuck to your sock? <laughs> Sorry about that. Stop, Ian. So no hot tub stream. Not yet. Not yet. Dude. I want to. If we do a hot tub stream, I want to gain up to 250 pounds. And then we'll do it. And get huge. Yeah. Just sweat it all well, out. Well, because, uh, yeah, I just want the image of the water trying to, like, I don't know. The displacement will be funny. I want that. The bubbles would be loud. It's like the jets going. You need good know. audio. Last time I was in a hot tub, I think, was um, I was staying in Three Rivers at the entrance to Sequoia National Park Sequoia. with uh, with Deirdre. We had just gotten engaged. Oh, that's and, awesome. Um, um, What's up, James? Like we, we had a we had a hot tub in the back of the Airbnb, just like looking up at the stars. It was so awesome. That sounds great. MDJ, what's up, losers? Not much is up. Yeah, Not just here for a minute. Up. Not much is up. I, I'm very I'm very pleased to have Ahmed swing by. You weren't even supposed to crash in my place last night. No, his it was Airbnb, an accident. His Airbnb's got all messed up. Oh, that that reminds me. I got to go to my new one soon. Do you? Oh shit! Uh, I don't have to. Do you, do you want to go there and then come back? Yeah, it's nearby. We should do that, or I'll do that. Because um, you want to drop your stuff. You don't yeah. want to like wait until all the way till night and yeah. make that your first time. You want to go, come back. All right. Because I'd rather not try to find parking at night and all that. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine, but. Gotcha, gotcha. James likes hearing about us in a hot tub. I am. Everybody, starting. everybody does. You well, hungry? All right, we're yeah, going to yeah. wrap it up. It's been two and a half hours this here. This has been really fun. I can go another two hours if I wasn't hungry. <laughs> this is really fun. All right, if anybody has any last questions for Ahmed while we have him. Almond Alderon is here to answer questions. Go on and throw them in there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get cynics in the hot tub. He needs a little food. This is getting to be a really big hot tub. Wait, people talk a lot about losing their inner child a lot. But what about feeling strangled by what feels like your own immature, self-sabotaging, <laughs> and infantile interests that you aren't grown up enough? Honor the interests. That's the whole point. You, you're labeling them yourself. I don't know where this judgment is coming from, but if you zoom out and you're just the only person that exists on an island, like, what are those interests? Why are you labeling them? I mean, I'm assuming it's not like something really, really bad. But I think that's the guy who said there's something really, really bad. Oh, the violence guy? <laughs> I think that's Dackler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't um, <laughs> go see a therapist. Um, I, I, questions like this always put me in a, in a difficult position. Um, but it's, it's a false difficult position because I'm just some fucking guy on the internet, right? And I, your art is a very personal thing. I do think that my views on art and art practices are very structuralist. I feel like 
the art practice is something transcendental. So th th this is a stupid thing to have to come out of my mouth, but anything is allowed, which puts me in a false position as if I am some arbiter of the morality or ethics that apply to art or that I have some mm, position that yeah. says, oh, this is what's good. That's completely wrong. That's just not right. I, th anything is possible in there and your your mind is going particular places for reasons. There's conditioning factors, things that have happened in your life, things that have not happened in your life that are pushing you towards that. And art is a way to explore that. Does that mean that, let's say, everything is appropriate to show to the whole world? Maybe not, right? Maybe some things can be made just for you, right? We don't show all of the work that we make to the world. Um, just consider that, but... As hard, like, it's really hard sometimes. If, if someone's looking me at the face in the face and I'm like, I want to make the most disturbing, hard, I want to like hurt people with images, I really don't know what to say to that. It's like, I do believe on the ground floor anything is viable in art, but you put it puts you in a weird position. It's like, I just don't think, maybe I personally don't think it's a great idea, but what can one person ultimately say about it, art? It also might be that he, this person has to go through creating the art to understand why, he's, why they're doing it. Um, I, I'd say like you have this opportunity to make art out of it. So there's two things happening. There's the desire to do it and then the judgment of it. That judgment could also be an art in a reaction to that part of you. And what's that look like? I don't know. That's what an artist figures out. So there's a duality of, of the judgment as well as the things you want, you think you want to do. Um, that just screenshot your, your, your question there and like, you know, pick it apart. Like okay, what would what, what how would this look like as an as a piece of art in terms of the the dark things, but also what is my reaction? How can I make that into art too? Which is, you know, like your reaction might be, I feel so weird and guilty and ashamed of this. I'm going to do a teddy bear. I don't know, but like whatever your answer is, it's 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 a reflection of your entirety from the inside, and so start exploring that. You never know what you might find. All right, now we're officially at two and a half hours. So unless you saw anything, last final thing, then let's say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for uh, being here and for asking med questions. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, happy drawing. Um, check out Med's course. Check out my course. Uh, alternate payment options are available oh. for... Form from imagination. There's a few versions now. Let me just get this straight. No feedback versions to check out. So you ran it for almost a year where you're giving feedback to everyone who bought the course. Yeah. And people were asking, is there a version that I can buy that's cheaper that doesn't have the feedback? And that's what you just launched? <laughs> yeah, very persistently. I mean, people were mostly looking for any version, any way to make it cheaper. And I couldn't provide that for them because my time is a gate. It can only right. be so cheap or else I can't give the feedback. So you're right? doing a feedback, no feedback version. Yeah. So the, the way to provide a different, an alternate pricing system was I had to separate the feedback from it. But you, if you get one of those versions, you can upgrade to feedback later. You can buy a feedback ticket that will then get you into the community where you can get feedback. Cool. Oh, well, congrats on that, by the way. Super thank cool. you. Yeah. Thank you. You're very sweet. You're very kind. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. All right, everybody. And Have a great uh, life in case I never see you again. I don't know. Maybe this is the last video on the channel. Who cares even? I'm going to not say anything. Just shh. Sh 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 I'm Steven. I'm rude to my... my